Hey folks, welcome to the Generational Gap. Yeah, this, we're here again. There's John. John's our resident millennial. I'm hey. Robert, resident Gen Xer. Um, we've got Henry here tonight as well on tech. How are you doing, Henry, tonight? How are you doing? <laughs> doing pretty good. Pretty good. Tomorrow's my birthday, so I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, happy early birthday, man. Appreciate it. Nice plug. Nice yeah. plug. I didn't get you anything. Well, I got you the same thing I got you last year. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> the same size and everything. Should still fit, right? <laughs> and uh, we, have a, we have a special guest here. <clears throat> Uh, we do, we do. We have another millennial, so that'll put me at three to one odds here tonight. <laughs> um, we, we we've got Happy with us tonight. Is it, is is it okay if I yeah. show you your stripper name? Her stripper name is Happy. <laughs> happy, Happy, Joy, Joy. But we're just gonna call her Happy. <laughs> we may slip in and call her Joy every once in a while, but we'll live with it. Yeah. Hello. So uh, if you want to tell everyone a little bit about yourself and. Uh, kind of why you're here. Like y'all said, I'm a millennial and I'm the female voice of reason here because you're in a room full of three men <laughs> and topics should be covered by all sides, I believe. So Yeah, absolutely. And um, you identify yourself as a feminist, correct? To a degree, yes. To I degree. believe in equal feminist. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so I believe that, you know, as a female who is asking for equality, it comes with both sides, you know. Again, the door thing. If, if a man opens a door, that's wonderful. If a female opens a door, great too. We should all be allowed to do the same things. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right, awesome. Uh, uh, you know, I, if you don't mind, I have another question I want to throw at you because this just mm -hmm. popped in my head. Because you're, 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 you're biracial, mm -hmm. right? Um, does that... How does that factor into your feminism? It doesn't affect it, really. Um, I mean, there are certain things we I change on based on look, just so I can fit in more with certain groups to get to, like jobs, etc. So, like in college, I took I was for business school, and one of my business teachers happened to be a black woman, and she told me my afro would not get me a job as a black woman. Um, that it would be distracting, take away from my intelligence. And hmm. so I did the next day when I got a relaxer and straightened my hair chemically. That's so in your experience, do you think that you see a difference in the two things, how you're perceived as a bi person of biracial heritage versus how you're seen as a woman? Are those separate entities or do they play together whenever you deal with any kind of. I do feel like they kind of do play together because it does affect certain things that I wouldn't only think about. Like, like the job thing again, um, it affected that more than I thought it would. Um, it affects the way people view you differently as well. And on the race thing, it, it, it does, like, there are certain communities online and such, like the hair communities and stuff like that, um, that we kind of do get shunned from. Um, and they shun men as well as women for hair textures and stuff like that. It does affect that oddly that it, I wasn't prepared for, actually, honestly. Why do you think that is? Honestly, so like, not trying to go off topic, but the Black Lives Movement, mm -hmm. that's for black lives. Right. And as with my dad being white like he is, they, I get more privileges in their eyes. Right. Even though I have more melanin in my skin than, than the two of you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so it does affect certain things oddly, honestly. Um, but we try, I try not to let it affect me if my day goes on. Right. <laughs> Well, you know, so I appreciate you answering that because I'm, you know, I'm always hugely curious to to find out how people are dealing with um, the various inequalities that we we do see mm -hmm. in our society and in our cultures, and especially when there are multiple inequalities to be doled out to one individual yeah. in that way. Yeah, um, it's it's something that I've dealt with because you know I've got I come from Native American heritage as well as white. Um, but I'm also bisexual, so I, I run. Strong. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I've always dealt with both sides of the coin all my life growing up. Mm -hmm. Where those that are you know for equality for these groups, yeah. um, you know, they still look at me and it's the same thing. Well, you're just confused. You yeah. don't know what you are. You 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 get this, that, and the other. You don't know what you like. Right. You're just you're just experimenting. <laughs> but good. But thank you for thank you for answering that. So that's a you know I like that. That's uh, that's. That's good to see. And I, as I told you before in our off mic conversation, <laughs> you're the type of feminist I can get behind. Yeah, we agree on a lot of different um, things, actually. Not literally. 
So anyway, uh, John, we uh, we we had some topics to talk about today. A couple, right? Yeah, just yeah. a couple of little uh, things. Just a couple because we do have something very special at the end, uh, and I that I can't wait to do it. Are we um, are we going to keep that a secret, or are we uh, going to no, I mean, give I, it a little taste of it now? Yeah, yeah. We're just going to say, uh, you know, we're going to take the uh, political compass test, find out, you know, where we lie on the spectrum, if you will. Well, I, I have a challenge for you. All right. All right. Now, well, let me preface this with the question: Have you taken this before? Yes. So you know exactly how you're going to fall out, uh, or how long I, has I, it been? Yeah. How long? I, uh, I think the last time I did was like a month ago, so it wasn't uh, that long ago. But well, never mind. But I mean, it's not like I remember like, what the but, questions are offhand. It's know? not about, but you know what you're going to come, what, where your leanings already yeah, are, yeah. right? You already, already you're know, yeah. yourself aware, as it were, right. per Google. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Google has told me who I am. That's right. Someone had to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, then never mind. That blows that. I was going to see if we could uh, kind of figure out where we peg ourselves. Well, I mean, you, um, you can still do that if you want. You can take a guess. For you? For you or for me, for, yeah. Well, for, for you. Oh, God. Well, you know I think you're a communist. <laughs> <laughs> very close. Very, very close. <laughs> oh, no. I, I, I worry that I'm probably going to be far more conservative than I than I would normally equate myself to be or that I want to tell people. It's possible. I don't socially. know. You've got some, you've got some pretty liberal I do. views. So I don't know. I think you're going to be, I think you're going to be uh, left of center, which would be the bottom left box. Good. I think you're going to be in that one. I feel, honestly. I feel pigeonholed. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so that being the case, then let's move, uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get on to our uh, first topic. Um, which I think is uh, this one's been uh, this one's been sitting in the back of my head chewing at me uh, since Tuesday when this happened. So, yeah. John, you want to go ahead and give a little input as to what happened? Yeah. So uh, David Hogg's family's house was swatted. Uh, I believe it was on Tuesday. Am I correct on that? I think it was. And uh, so, luckily for him, uh, he wasn't there. He was in Washington D.C. with his mother. Um, they were accepting the. Uh, Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights Award at the time, uh, which, I mean, I guess that could be a whole different topic if we wanted to do that at some point. But uh, right now we're going to focus on the, the swatting. So what happened was uh, the, the, the 9-11, uh, 9-11, the 911 caller said there was a stabbing in a hostage situation. Uh, it turns out the day before the Broward Broward County Sheriff's Office was used a similar call, and now the two incidents may be connected. Okay, so this this, this article here uh, that I was reading from, talking about a, a uh, another, I guess, swatting that happened immediately, the, like the day after, right? Yeah, uh, the Broward County Sheriff's Office faced a similar fake call on Tuesday morning. Uh, the target of the swatting call was Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School student, uh, student activist David Hogg's home. Then on Wednesday, the Palm Beach uh, County Sheriff's Office got a fake 911 call to another activist home in suburban Delray Beach. Uh, and I believe, yeah, it was Cameron Caskey. It was his house, uh, which he was also in D.C. at the time for the same event. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. Let's talk about that for a second. How I wonder if whoever did these calls, because they're, they're saying they're connected, or they, they may be connected. And I can definitely see that. But do you think that the people who called knew that they were going to be in D.C. and so did it because of that? Well, or if they just thought they were going to catch him at home and they just happened to not be? Well, well, you know, the, the, the back and forth as to whether or not the person that set the call, you know, it's going to be just like any other situation. They'll have their story. You know, the, whatever they think will serve their purpose. So we're not really going to know, did they did they know they were home? Did they not know they were home? Sure. Um, I think the most important thing is um, you know, what you said about fortunately they weren't home. Yeah. And that's the big thing. And, and to, you know, for those of you out there that don't uh, fully understand the, the tactic of swatting, um, it's a, it's basically, uh, when you prank someone by calling and saying that there's some horrific incident happening that would normally result in a SWAT, uh, team being called to the location to, uh, rectify. And, um, 
this goes on, you know, it's typically associated with the gaming community. Yeah. Um, that's this where is it where it got its, its, its yeah. roots and its origin from. Um, however, uh, it's most recently been hitting the spotlight a few months back. A uh, gentleman uh, had a SWAT team arrive at his house as a result of a SWATing call with misinformation for the address given. And when the man opened the door, he was shot by the SWAT team and later died. Um, this opens up, yes, this opens up uh, the debate. So, you know, it, if this were to be called a crime to do this, oh, it is well, then I'm, th then I'm most certain that this kid uh, or whoever, I say kid, yeah, we I'll just go we ahead. <laughs> we'll just that go just ahead. Shows your bias it's going from the maturity standpoint. Anybody yeah. who's that immature, you know, my first thought is this is potentially one of his High school, you know, there are there are factions at that high school that don't agree with what David Hogg I mean, and Caskey are out there doing. I mean, there's a lot of people who don't agree with what he does. Sure. I mean, including sure. myself. And I agree. You know, but um, that doesn't mean so he needs to be swapped. Whoever the way. individual is that did this, right, um, if, if they're presented with facing a crime, they're going to lean on, well, I knew he wasn't home. And hope that that hel helps them. So we'll never really know, know the that answer would to that. Help. I don't no, think that, it would either. But that doesn't. Using but resources. if they're irrational enough to make that phone call, they're irrational enough to try and reason that you know, saying the best thing to help their situation is what's going to work. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, which is worse? Do I say yes? I knew they. Uh, I didn't know if they would be home or not. Or do I say yes? I knew they would be gone when I did this. I just wanted to do the prank. Right. You know, so th maybe that cushions the blow when the justice, the judge is handing down a sentence. But I've not seen anything that suggested that his like father wasn't there. I don't know if he has any siblings, sure. but there was there was no. Uh, if if they knew, all they knew was you know maybe they only knew that family was there. You know, maybe it was you know he didn't have the itinerary, and then or she that made the call. Who knows? Yeah. I think it. I think it really doesn't matter, and and that's the point to what they'll say. You know, it doesn't matter what they say, the reasoning or what they thought, who was and wasn't there. Yeah. What really matters is the crime involved, and what do we call it? What does it become? You know, this is a dangerous thing. People have now died from this, right. and that leads to the question. I mean, should it be considered an attempted murder, and should uh, this particular case? that we're talking about with uh, David Hogg and now Cameron Kasky, uh, whether or not it should be considered terrorism. Uh, because it is a, a violence for a political purpose. I can actually see it as a terrorist again. I, I can see again. the argument. I don't know I mean, if I would be as quick to say that it is, but I can, I can absolutely see the, the argument. It's and definitely I will political invite... harassment. Political harassment is definitely what I would call it. But does the, yeah, but does the also... intent fall to motive? That's where True. we have to, that's where, you know, that's where things will get muddied in court. Does attempt fall to motive? Well, I mean, you know? yeah, that, that's the only reason they would do that, uh, presumably, is that they don't like his political, you know, well, his, they don't like his political leaning. They don't like his, uh, you know, his political message. That, that, I mean, it's got to be connected to that. Well, unless he's got someone out there who hates him for a different reason, but I can't, I mean... Right, and and that's the only thing that connects. It. And the hope is that they can find who whoever did this, yeah. so that we can uh, get some rectification out of it. The problem with it is, is you know how easy it is to not do. not do this with your own number. You can you know the you can fake yeah. a phone number. Right. You know, there's no telling who they could have made that look like it comes from. Yeah. You know, I mean, and this this in and of itself, these kind of things opens up a whole can of worm to where you know, okay, so if I want to get a number for a known white supremacist and fake the call and initiate one of these things to David Hogg's house. Well, you know, who have I just implicated in a crime? Yeah. You well, know, I'm how sure, hard I'm is I'm sure that? they're able to tell whether or not the number was faked. I'm sure there's a way. I mean, I guess I don't know that for sure, but... Well, that's I, one of the things that you do in this because you want to avoid any indication that of who you are making yeah, the call. Yeah, afterwards. Right, so you might not no, no, no. who it was. It's an app, yeah, yeah. it's apps that you download that mask it. You just put in somebody else's phone number, and that's who it right. shows it comes from. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, when it comes to like the law enforcement side, I'm not sure if there's a way for them to know. That's how you're they're fooling the law be. enforcement. No, I was watching. Uh, I'm not uh, saying that it would show who actually did it. I'm just saying that you can tell that it had been faked. Well, you know what I mean. No, because you can. For instance, if I want to fool Henry. I can yeah. use this app and type your number in right. and to him, and even the phone records will show that it came from your phone. Hmm. 
The only thing that won't show is that your phone made that right. text or call at that time. Yeah. They would have to find me and figure out it was me, but nothing's attached to it. So, mm-hmm. yes, you can mask your number with someone else's and implicate them in a situ- this situation. Yeah, which should also be a crime, I suppose, if you're trying to get someone else framed, you know. I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure if that's a crime. I'm sure it is. It's fraud. Sure. Yeah, it is fraud. Yeah. yeah I mean, especially if you, you know, uh, there's, I, I forget what the litiga- litigated term is for, right. you know, impersonating someone else and okay, you know, yeah. especially making them a victim by accusing them of a crime they didn't commit. Yeah. You know, or sure. however you want to, or implicating them in a crime they didn't commit. Um, that's false something or other. Uh, any law minds out there want to post a comment yeah, um, a when you like that. and subscribe to the channel, please do. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this, uh, you that's know, it's, done. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a greater <laughs> issue to me than a prank anymore. This can no oh, longer no. be seen as a prank. Yeah. And yes, I have to agree that, you know, whether it's intent to motive uh, it defines it as a terroristic act or not. Um, I think that attempted murder pretty much covers I everything. Fair, yeah. um, you know, and then the severity of it, you know, depending on what happens, you know, that could well, if someone qualify actually dies, it, it wouldn't more. be attempted murder anymore. Right. You know? It's going to be, it's going to be, you also yes. have, you also have, uh, you know, suicide by cop, right? So, sure. you kinda, so, I mean, it, the cops being used as a tool to end life. Well, I, be, from an out, you know, from a third sure. party. It, and the, I mean, yeah, that's the same kind of if, deal, I think, uh, just the opposite, obviously. Well, it would be like anybody trying to hold this <laughs> officer that shot the other gentleman. Right. Responsible, right? You, you, I mean, well, the other one that was, I mean, from what I understood, he like came out of his house with his hands up and had, you know, was facing. Well, sure, the but there was direction. But it's still, it's there's a there's but, yeah, there's I mean, a moment of intensity like there that you yeah. cannot, you cannot unless you sit in those <laughs> shoes. It's like Sequoia from the Cherokee Indian tribe said, mm-hmm. you know, you can't judge a man until you've walked a mile in his moccasins. You right. don't know <laughs> when you're if you're not in that spot. Yeah, there's no way to know. And for anybody to judge that moment is only trying to dissuade from the greater problem um, to, you know, draw attention away. And I have seen people try and draw attention away by trying to throw blame. And even his commanding officers, you can't, you don't know yeah. that this is what it is. Um, so, yeah, it is attempted murder. And if you, if you succeed and somebody gets killed, well, then you've got a whole other can of worms. But yeah. You know, we've got to find a way to get past this or, you know, really put it out there. Somebody needs to really stand over the fire on this one and show what happens when you when you mess around this way. This is this is so wrong (laughs) on a fundamental level to even be. And, considering that and I yes. mean, again yeah, I, I definitely agree I absolutely disagree with his political stances but that doesn't mean that he needs to be swatted that doesn't mean right. that the anything harassment physical of it, the, the, yeah, the attack of it doesn't need to be done to him you need to defeat his ideas and not him as a person but you know it's, to me I, I worry that we've gotten into this volatile uh, place you know um, where <laughs> action equal and opposite reaction yeah. kind of thing that we're smacking each other back and forth and and we're we're thinking that it's okay you know yeah. we're living in a culture and an environment i should say where it's okay to lash out it's okay to say what you want it's okay to act the way you want it's okay to pretend tyranny for the pri- for the sake of lashing out mm-hmm. yeah. yeah that's true but you know, then on the other hand, we have other situations that, you know, mm-hmm. are, are stepping on people's liberties as you would, as you would. Yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, the next thing that uh, we've noticed this uh, recently that happened was the uh, the baker uh, in, uh, he yeah. is in, uh, what's Colorado. It? Colorado. Somewhere in Colorado. Yeah, the sure. Colorado baker who went to the Supreme Court to get a ruling about uh, not having to, um, yeah. and ultimately not having to uh, create wedding cakes for gay couples if he doesn't want to. Um, he, uh, he wound up leaning on uh, free speech for this. So yeah. this is important, uh, you know, that he, well, he went First on the First Amendment. It's not necessarily just free speech, right? Sure. It's freedom of association. It's freedom of expression. 
and the freedom of speech, the freedom of the press, and the freedom to sure. uh, you know assemble right. uh, peacefully. And he said that he didn't want to have to be forced <laughs> yeah. to say speech that he didn't agree with. Right. Right. And for both religious and personal beliefs yeah. and all of that combined, right? So stepped all over his First Amendment rights to have to do that. Uh, but continue. Uh, you know, where, you know. Well, so uh, what happened, so I'll read a little bit of the article here. Uh, the Supreme Court on Monday <laughs> ruled in favor of a Colorado baker who had refused to create a wedding cake for a gay couple. The court's decision was narrow, and it left open the larger question of whether a business can discriminate against gay men and lesbians based on rights protected by the First Amendment. The court passed on an opportunity to either bolster the right to same-sex marriage or explain how far the government can go in regulating business uh, businesses run on religious principles. Instead, Justice Anthony M. Kennedy's majority opinion turned on the argument that the Colorado Civil Rights Commission, which originally ruled against the baker, had been shown to be hostile to the religion because of the remarks of one of its members. So he was he was making more of the argument that the the lower judge that had ruled the case before uh, didn't take into account enough the guy's religious uh, beliefs and didn't uh, I guess didn't see them as as legitimate as they would be protected under the First Amendment. And so threw it out because of that, or didn't throw it out, but ruled against it because of that, as opposed to whether or not it's the right thing to do, whether or not it's covered under the actual amendment. Well, <clears throat> but now, um, ultimately, though, from, a, from, from that standpoint, from the, the standpoint of the First Amendment, um, you don't believe it should ever come down to that question one way or the other. Is that correct? What they should mean, have. You exactly? would agree that this baker has the right to refuse service. Yeah, yeah, I would. To anybody. To anyone. Yeah. And and you understand that you know from my standpoint that just opens up a slippery slope, right? Yeah. No, I understand. And uh, so, the, and that's a principle that I, you know, I, I agree with it on principle. However. I don't think that it would be a good idea to repeal, like, civil rights legislation. I don't think that would be a good idea. But on principle, yeah, I don't think that anyone should be forced to associate with someone that they don't want to associate or speak words that they don't want to speak. So that, that, that's all it comes down to. I mean, yeah, I think that the, uh, the free market will out. And if someone wants to be a racist or some other sort of bigot, they're not going to last long in business. And it's just, it'll be a terrible business model. I mean, to say, I don't want your money is not going to work in a capitalist society. Any thoughts or anything? <laughs> well, I, I, you, it, it, it comes down to the fact that allowing for that, if, if it were an unregulated situation or unlegislated situation, yeah. however you want to call it, um, it does. It opens the door for exclusionism, yeah. uh, racism, segregation, uh, collectivism. It opens well, so these... segregation was actually legislated as opposed well, to it being part of not having legislation. Sure. But even after the civil rights movement, you know, we're talking about things where business owners would say no colors, right. you know, this kind of thing. So uh, and, what's and to stop that from happening now? And we can go on the fact that, you know, sure, the free economy will win out. Um, but I think it, but the harm that it can do tried. up until the point where it hopefully evens out and it settles back out the the the, the hatred the the dis difficulty it's going to cause you know there's a reason why you can't just openly segregate you can't openly um discriminate because so, it it creates yeah you an, can't an, openly but you still can discriminate you can still not serve someone on any other basis other than their you know race religion sure uh, sex, in some places or, in other places it's legislated well yeah so what I'm saying is you can come up with some other reason to not serve them you know what I mean it, it really doesn't help that much all you, uh, the only thing you can't do is say it's because of so X. 
so then we just say, okay, you can you can refuse service to anybody you want for any reason. You just can't yeah. openly announce it. That that's what the current legislation does. Yeah, you can't mm. be honest about it. No, right. Right. <laughs> exactly. You just can't be honest about it. <laughs> so, but but technically, you there's really can. no difference. I, I think that people are a lot less racist today than they were when that uh, legislation was introduced when it was necessary. At that time, it was absolutely necessary. Now, again, I don't think that we should repeal that, especially in the current political climate. But on principle, I want people to be able to associate with the people that they want to and not be forced to associate with people that they don't want to associate with. So from the standpoint of rights, yeah. okay, the important thing is not to infringe on someone else's rights. Right. Mm -hmm. So if we have a community, we'll take a hypothetical community, and 90% of that community is, we're going to go with, with just the numbers, white. <laughs> and every business in that community adopts a whites-only policy. The 10% that are disenfranchised and forced out of that community, how does that not infringe upon their rights when they can't have goods and services I, at a at in a in a town that they live in. Right. See, I don't think that would happen. Just because you don't think it won't happen no, doesn't mean it hasn't happen. happened in the past. It has happened. People in the past. want to do it now. I don't. I name somebody. You you Citation, cannot please. you cannot tell me that there are not places like Forsyth County in Georgia where they wouldn't be still be happy to get rid of all the black people that they don't like and that the racism carried on well into the 70s and 80s, still burning crosses, I mean, still being anti-black in the present day society that we have, because I consider the 80s and 90s modern present society yeah, still. Yeah, sure. And for that to continue there and there's still to be a mindset that they could live without blacks in the community. Now you're telling you're, that opens the door right. for discrimination and segregation and ousting of people from a community in those situations. And and it doesn't even have to be 90-10 split. This yeah, could happen yeah. in a 70-30 whatever. That's that. When does that start to step on somebody's rights that that's okay? The free enterprise is okay in that way. So you're saying... Like when, what, at what point of you refusing service to someone does it start to infringe on their rights? Correct. Uh, I mean, it really doesn't. I, I mean, it's unfortunate, but I mean. So if they, if if that ten percent, I know it, so, it sounds really harsh and it sounds really bad, but it's 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 all about freedom of association. But if you it's force a, people from the community where they have every right to live, oh yeah, yeah. But absolutely. if you actively pursue a saying, goal of forcing people i'm saying that's not going to happen but it's already saying. happened and there happened and as i said that's that mindset like still that. exists in many places anyone in this country who, anyone who owns a business is going to take anyone's money that if, comes if in. 90 percent of the business is white they don't care uh, right in that situation why would a business owner care if 90 percent of his business is already coming from whites and if they push the rest out that aren't white they can fill up with more whites and make it 100 percent white uh, see, you I don't cannot think tell think me like that. that. I don't think people are going to... Why do we have white supremacists still if people don't we, think that there, way? There are so very few white supremacists why do we, in the world. There are so very few. And, and so very few very, white very supremacists, few. so very few Nazis, so, yeah, very, so few, very, very few of those. Yeah. But combined, you start to see that these, there's still pockets of this in our country. We have not eradicated racism enough no, to get rid not. of this mindset. And it doesn't matter if it happens. It doesn't matter if it happens one time or 10 times. The one time is enough. I mean, how is that, you know, beneficial to our society to let those kind of things happen or make it allowable? Yeah. You know, when do we begin to regulate to um, diffuse potential situations? Yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm not trying to advocate for repealing, uh, you know, the the Civil Rights Act or anything like that. I'm not trying to sure, say that we should. I understand that. All, I'm, all I was, uh, I'm just pointing out the principle of freedom of association, and so that's why I would be on the side of the baker rather than the uh, the gay couple, 
But also, I would be on the same side of, uh, there was a story in Seattle about a, uh, a gay coffee shop owner who refused to serve two Christians, a Christian couple who came into his. I would be on his side in that case as well. Okay. It's his choice if he mm-hmm. wants to sell them coffee or not. It's, it, but that's the thing, is it works all, you know, across the board. Well, Everyone gets that choice. I tell you what, I would be on board with it under this condition. Mm-hmm. When corporations and businesses, let's just go ahead and wrap it all up under free enterprise mm-hmm. and capitalism is not the driving money behind much of what happens in Washington, well, yeah. then I will say they don't need to be legislated in how they do business. But if they're going to rely on buying Washington to pursue their goals, yeah. then they must be legislated by those same people and therefore do business as is expected in a normal culture and society that breeds, that should be promoting <laughs> harmony and equality versus dissension and discrimination. Um, yeah, I don't think there's as much of a problem with that, with those massive corporations, the ones who can buy politicians. They definitely don't care where they get their money from. They're going to take their money from anyone they can. Well, well so, yes. I, mean, I don't think there's a bigger problem. But you understand that they about. but they set the standard for what's happening <coughs> for everyone below them. <coughs> so when these big corporations are getting rules put in place and how businesses need to do, handle their business, that same thing affects small business as much as it does the big boys. Everybody's sure. affected when the big boys make play. Sure. And so if they're not being discriminatory, then they're not setting that standard to be discriminatory below them. Sure. But all you have to do is open the door for anybody to be discriminatory as much as they yeah. want. You see, I really don't think, especially in our current year, <laughs> we're not, uh, we, we don't see things that like as, as you know, uh, Oh, well, I don't, I'm not going to take someone's money because I don't like what they do. I'm taking your money. I'll take your money. I'll take anyone's money. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not going to say, gonna but say John has his hand on the table. Like, <laughs> give me money. Give me money. <laughs> That's exactly how Washington is. Right. right. I'm discriminatory. They'll take anyone's money. Sure. But it's corporations, and that's where the money's coming from for the most part. They're large companies, organizations, mm-hmm. and they want things to happen. That's That money's not just coming in. There are strings attached to 90-plus percent of that money. So these corporations oh, yeah. are going to want legislation. They're going to want these people on their side. But do you think they're going to want legislation that restricts them? No, but they are going to be they're fine with legislation that tells them they can do business with whoever they want. And when that affects small businesses that get the same rights and then small businesses on the local level are, are creating these kind of situations. You know, this is this is chaos and havoc we don't need. It's just I, I don't like that open door. And if if money's going to pay for how to for Washington to say how businesses can run so that they get all the benefits that they want, then Washington needs to be able to regulate how they do business as part of that payment. Now, I have a question. So what if the baker had asked the the gay couple to pay double the price for that said cake? Would that be okay with y'all? Um, I mean, they, they have the right to ask, or ask whatever price that they want. Uh, but if I was being charged double, I would tell them to go fuck themselves and go to another place that wouldn't do that to me. So you wouldn't take it to the courts? Um, I mean, I can't say that I wouldn't because I've not, not been in that situation before. So I can't really say what I would do. I mean, I would probably use the existing system, you know, to do what needs to be done. But, I mean, if if, if it was a case where... You know, like what I was saying, mm-hmm. where freedom of association, mm-hmm. someone doesn't have to, you know, that's perfectly legal, then yeah, I would just tell them to kick rocks and I'm going to go to the next bakery down the road that's going to want my money. Robert? Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I disagree with any any discrimination in that way from a business standpoint. Um, you know, that's, it's it's not good business. It's not, uh, you know, I agree right. with you. It's not good business, mm-hmm. but that doesn't mean people aren't going to. Yeah. No, it's, that it's not boycotting it's, it's by not, the people that aren't, you know, people, it's, are gonna, the people who are not racist or bigoted. In but, you, way, but, you know, there are... You know, I wouldn't go somewhere that says a certain person isn't allowed there. I wouldn't go to that business. But so that's why you're saying it would get better is because 
that now that baker has a chance of going out of business because of his personal beliefs right. or what have you. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. And if people know that, you know, hey, you can't, if you're getting gay married, you can't get your wedding cake there. He's going to lose out on a bunch of business. Or if your friends are gay, you can't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, he's going to lose out on a ton of business, you know, which uh, may or may not be part of the reason for the lawsuit. But, you know, why they went to court or why he uh, wanted to go. I'm not sure. I don't really remember seeing anything about it uh, when it was in the Colorado court. But, uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, generally the, the principle is you have the right to associate with someone you want to and you have the right to not associate with someone that you don't want to. And, uh, yeah, it will regulate itself. They, I have a feeling that they would have ruled differently if they had taken a different approach to how they presented the case. They took a slightly different tact than they should have taken. Yeah. Um, and had they gone about it the right way and really talked about, you know, focused on the, the spiritual aspect. Because, I mean, you know, when it's all said and done, you know, if I, why can't I sue Chick-fil-A for not being open on Sunday when I want a, a, a sausage biscuit on a <laughs> Sunday morning? Right. Because they close the business for religious purposes, right. but I don't follow their religion, so I should have access to a Chick-fil-A biscuit on a Sunday morning <laughs> right. when, I, which, which is my when I'm not in church. <laughs> right. Which is my argument. That but, they have the freedom to be closed if they want to, and they're losing sure. money by being closed, but that's sure. their choice to make. And and, and ultimately, there are, there are a lot of businesses that will make the wrong choices, and whether or not they do or don't stay in business, as long as, you know... It, once it begins to happen large scale, you know, I mean, See, I don't think you're going to have that kind of case in a large scale. I don't think that like, you know, Walmart's not going to say, you know, no more, whatever kind of people. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, like, large scale is, is because if, you know, even if 15% of businesses across the country after a ruling like that, that, you know, anything goes to anybody you want, you can turn away. Yeah. Even if 15% of the, of businesses across the country put up discriminatory, segregatory dis uh, comments about who could and couldn't come in. The seeds of racism and action and 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 anger and uh, you know crazy will that. How much do you need for that to really start blowing up the, even more? I guess Look, more it took one Rodney King trial in L.A. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think, uh, yeah, uh, I think that people today would not stand for that sort of discrimination. And so they would not shop at those businesses and those people are not going to. Yes, but I would also think that just because I don't like David Hogg's view on what should happen with gun law in this country, that somebody wouldn't make a you know, a SWAT call to his house and potentially get him and his family right, shot. Which, you would think these rights. things wouldn't happen. Well, and yeah, they, but this hope so, in, right. he, but we have, I think we proved time and again, um, just in our present society, the way it is now that, you know, hate is the new black. <laughs> it is, it is the new thing to be hateful and, and make sure that you tell everybody. And if, if you're not telling, show them. Show them how much hatred you have for their ideology or who they are or what they think. Now it's about speaking out, acting out. Everywhere we turn, I we can see, see that. Yeah, vitriol and all, is, uh... all in the name of justice, all in the name of equality, all in the name of what? It's not America. That's not America. It's, it's in the name of ideology is where it's going to come down to, I think. Well... Then I, guess human we, hate. I guess we need to put aside all false gods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, and that's, you know, ultimately that's where I see things like this. When these things happen and when it's allowable, you know, anybody that thinks it's allowable, you've got to, I, I think that it's, it's inherent that we look at the repercussions of said actions because those are the worst things. Those are the things that we're going to pass on. Yeah. You know, when my generation is gone, what did what repercussions did we pass on? Not what did we screw up? Mm. What do we continue to screw up after we're gone? What's our legacy for screwing up? <laughs> right. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, that's that that's the part that scares me. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. What can you do? We've got Donald Trump in the White House. So with Donald Trump yeah. in the White House, we're making America great again. Hey, you know, he uh... one ism at a time. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs>
All right, do you, do you have any thoughts on this? I'm not going to touch that with a stick. <laughs> All right. So uh, do we want to move on to the uh, political compass? Because I think this is going to actually take us a little while. Sure, we can, uh, we can move on to the political compass. Okay, let's, uh, let's move on then. Um, we'll do... Well, we're going to start out. Um, here we have it pulled up in front of us. And uh, we're going to see where we lay. And so the, the point of me wanting to do this is, one, so that people at home who uh, you know don't know us like most people don't um, can kind of get a feel as to where we you know lay on the political compass and where you know we might defer from them and where they might defer from us. And uh, also, to my plan is to do this again in about a year's time, just kind of see where we've changed and you know where we might not have. Right. And that makes a lot of sense because in previous off mic conversations, we've had this discussion yeah. where I understand from for certain life events happening how you can shift from liberal to conservative over the course of your life as you get older and mortality starts yeah. to rear its ugly head <laughs> and you have children that you're concerned with their futures, right? Right, right. Um, so, uh, without further ado, we'll, let's go ahead and start jumping into some of these questions. I'll read them out and then we'll just give our answer. Uh, happy if you don't mind, we'll go ahead and throw to you and you'll sure. throw some answers in as well. And we'll see where we all stack up. Um, this first set of questions are going to be some propositions and it, it's to gauge how we see the country and the world. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, for the, and all, so far, these questions all show strongly disagree, disagree, agree, or strongly agree. Yeah. I right? forget the name of the test, but it's a certain type of test and, uh, this, it's following that model. And I wish right. I could think of the name because I sound like an idiot now, but, uh, anyway, let's move on. You don't want to label it anyway. Well, I hate, it, it I hate labels. Lab I hate label. the labels. Um, all right. So the first question, if economic globalization is inevitable, it should primarily serve humanity rather than the interests of transnational corporations. I agree with this, Henry, if you'll plug me in on that one. Uh, I'm going to say agree as well, but with a stipulation in that I don't think that they should have to. I, don't, I mean, if a, if a transnational corporation only wants to be interested in itself, then that's its business. But I think that it should serve humanity over its own interests. Primarily, though. That's the key. Primarily, yeah. Okay. Um, I um, also agree, by the way. You agree okay. with you Just a straight-up agreement? Mm -hmm. um, I would have once in my life uh, strongly disagreed with that when I was younger. Yeah, I would I would have. I would have been very disagreeable to that. Um, but now I'm more in agreement that we need to do... You know, they need to they need to give back. That's giving mm -hmm. back to the community to me. Yeah. yeah. All right. On to our next question. I would always support my country, whether it was right or wrong. Um, I used to be I would have uh, I used to strongly disagree with this, but now I have to agree um, that I would support my country. But there are some gray areas. There's some ex extreme levels that I would not stand up and agree with and i would sure. voice my opinion against much as i do now um, yeah uh so i'm gonna say disagree um i i'm not going to support my country if it does something wrong um if it does something right obviously i will uh but it's I, i'm more uh, i run off of uh, principle more than <clears throat> whatever group i might be a part of whether that's a country an ethnicity uh, a religion whatever um so I, I make my decisions based on principle. And, and and I can assume, since it's not a strongly disagree, that you you are at least beholding to country I mean, I, to I a prefer, certain extent. I prefer my country to others. Exactly. Uh, so there, I, there's a level of patriotism there yeah, that, that rings that true. Not. Strongly disagree, you could be almost just a given. No matter what it does, no, it does not wrong. This, you know, well, not hey, but I mean, you you know, know, yeah, I'll yeah. take what you give me. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, somebody um, clipped that out, you know, this little sound bite, right, there, little sound, uh, sound bite right there. And and Happy, how would you rate yourself on this one? Disagree as well. There, if, if the country does something wrong, they should be held accountable for it, and I'm not going to stand with them on that one. Yeah, agreed. Okay. Um, so, uh, the next question, no one chooses his or her country of birth, so it is foolish to be proud of it. Um, I strongly disagree with this. Okay. Um, just from the same, I think it, 
to me, it speaks for itself. Um, you know, it's never foolish to be proud of your country, whether you're born there or not born there. Um, right. There needs to be a certain level of pride in your country if you're going to be sustained off of the sweat of its back. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. So for that one, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna agree with that, but it's only because. These are things that you didn't choose. It's not an accomplishment that you did to be whatever group you're going to be a part of. Um, so since you didn't choose it, you can't really be proud of it. I don't think it's foolish to be proud of it. I have no, you know, you can be, uh, as, as George Carlin said in one of his bits, um, you know, if you want to be happy to be an American, <laughs> that's one thing. You know, it's a, it's a fortunate thing. But to be proud of it, is you know, it's a little ridiculous just because you didn't have anything to do with that accomplishment. The only argument I will ever raise with that is this: you're free to go at any time. Yeah, that's why I say yeah. well. Yeah, because I, I also you're... strongly disagree with this because you, 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 yes, you're born here, and yes, you as an if you're born here, you're American. But if you don't, if you if you don't want to be here. Then don't be here. You have other options. Go right. somewhere else if, if you don't you, want to be if here. If you're not proud of where you live, then you need to change that. Well, like I, I said, mean, I'm, I'm happy, be, but I'm not proud of something that I didn't accomplish. Sure, but your country your accomplishes the, it, this. Though. Your country accomplishes this yeah. for you and makes your life available to you in the chosen country you choose to live in. You know, those that want to get out of countries that are oppressive. Yeah. You know, and they do their best to do so. And when they do, you know, they're, you know, they, again, they are be, they should be beholding to the country that but gives them citizenship. Of, they'll still be proud of that identity a lot of the time. Yes. And that's okay. But if you, but if you're not proud enough to live the country, um, you know, I think that the country that you're going to live within and self promote yourself within. Self promote yourself. Basically, as, yeah, as a citizen, I'm a citizen of this country. I'm a citizen yeah. of this country. Well, then you owe your loyalty to said country. To add... Wow, what an asshole. Yeah, what a dick. Silence your phone. <laughs> this is the guy. To add to that, Puerto Rican Americans are proud of being Puerto Ricans and they're proud of their parents being born there or if they were born there and they're here now. Yeah. They're proud of being Puerto Ricans, but they add that American by choice because they're proud yeah. of being Americans. Like I said, I don't think it's foolish to be proud of it. I'm just saying that you you didn't take part in that. And so to claim it as your accomplishment by virtue of being part of that group is not... I don't even know what word to use with that. Um, I mean, it's just not something that you should be proud of. I mean, I'm saying you can't. You obviously can be proud of, you know, whatever you want to be proud of. But it's just not, uh, it wasn't your accomplishment is my main point. And so I'm, again, it shouldn't be the only reason you're proud of your country. Yeah, because okay. you're born here. Well, yeah, I mean, just because you're born here doesn't mean, you know. Right. Yeah, gotcha. That's fair. All right. Um, oh, I, and, 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 you know. I know that, uh, you know, from the standpoint, this is how I've always been. I, I was grew, I grew up around military families, so yeah. there's an inherent patriotism that's built in no matter who you are. See, I was actually very lefty back in my day, and I, so I would have strongly disagreed. Back in your day. Back in the day. I would have been... Yeah, last, last, last week. Last week yeah. around June. Yeah, no, I, I, would have strongly, uh, I would have strongly disagreed with that uh, statement, but, you know, now, yeah, no... We All right. Uh, now, our race has many superior qualities compared with other races. Um, I uh, I am only going to go with a certain uh, disagree. I'm going to say disagree. I'm not going to say strongly disagree because yeah. I do understand that for whatever reason, however you want to qualify it, there are inherent differences between races as well as there are genders as well as there are multiple things. So I can't 100% disagree with this. I won't say that, I don't know. I, that's the best I can say I'm without gonna, sounding go with racist. I am too. Disagree disagree. Well. I think we're, so, yeah, we're, we're all, we all agree I mean, to it, disagree. It, it, <laughs> there's, there's, enough, disagree. <laughs> there's enough science that you've got to factor things in. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, facts are facts no matter what you want to say. It doesn't mean that anyone shouldn't have equality under the law. And that's the important part. 
the enemy of my enemy is my friend. I disagree with this, but I don't strongly disagree with that. My, I, to me, the enemy of my enemy is my tool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I disagree with that, though. Yeah, I disagree as well. Um, but used to, it didn't matter. You know, that under her, you, you, don't, you never snitch anybody out. You're yeah. not a rat. I mean, you know the other. reason why that's um, a phrase, right? Is because of how Romans uh, sure. dealt with people that they conquered. Sure. But if you ever... And so for them, know, it made sense as a foreign policy, you know. If, if that friend was in air quotes, that would be another thing. Yeah. But it's not. There's a, you know, there's two different things there, um, how you deliver that. All right. Military action that defies international law is sometimes justified. I have to agree with that. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to, but I have to agree as well, just from a uh, practical standpoint. And uh, hopefully, you know... Uh, um, saving more lives by doing something that might be technically illegal. You know, I, I'd yeah. rather save people than the law. I agree. My, my dad being way, growing up the way he was, uh, I have to agree with that. There are certain actions that the military has to take that may not fall in that black and white, may fall in that gray, that need to be taken to save more lives than loss. Yeah. Um and this this goes back to uh, you know similar to the question about the military for me when I was younger um, I learned at a very young age the concept that sometimes one person has to be taken out for the greater good mm -hmm. um, well, so and that's not always justified no, no, from no, the standpoint right. of military action right yeah. um, we can't necessarily snipe out the bad guy and say okay we've set things right in the world everybody gets a little bit testy when you start doing that yeah, yeah. but that doesn't mean it's not necessary <laughs> yeah well I mean <laughs> yeah uh, I mean so, so to do what's right is not always to do what's legal and so from that standpoint i would be fine with breaking international law in order to do the thing that's more morally correct yeah. which the law mm -hmm. might prevent you from doing well i think there needs to be, you know there's a certain level of it kind of acts like we here do here in the united states we have federal government we have states rights yeah. well you have international law yeah. but there are some things that can defer to country law versus international law mm -hmm. this yeah. is justified for our country to take this action militarily yeah. even though it countermands specific international laws but as long as it remains humanitarian well yeah we had to because... do that like a good example is taking out osama bin laden you know, we we weren't we didn't tell Pakistan that we were going to their airspace like we're supposed to. Mm. Right. You know, we didn't we didn't inform anyone. The ends. And but right versus so, the means. And I think that's generally a good thing to have taken them out. You know, and, and of course there's always conspiracy theories about oh they didn't really kill them and all that. But assuming that everything we're told is true, you know, I think it's a good it was a good move. All right. Uh, <clears throat> the next question. There is now a worrying fusion of information and entertainment. I strongly agree with this. I would never have thought this when I was younger, but it's different now. I, I strongly agree with this. This is this is bad to me. So I regularly agree to this. Um, I'll, and I, the reason I don't go to strongly agree is that mix the mix of information and entertainment can be good for uh you know kind of keeping people's attention a lot of people has got you know a lot of people have a very short attention span and i don't, I don't think it's a good thing that they do but i think that you know mixing information and, and entertainment is not always a bad thing if it's done correctly but, but i do but generally right well generally i that's why i selected agree instead of strongly yeah. agree or, or disagree is because it absolutely can be and usually is a bad thing, but I don't think it's a bad thing on the face of it. I agree with Robert on this. I, I strong. It's a very strong. I because, like, agree. entertainment can twist the way people view yeah, things. Yeah, no, absolutely. Can. So, yeah. like, it's people misunderstand the way it's put. The news should be just straight up facts. It shouldn't be funny or, or this and that and the other. I mean, yeah, I understand where you're coming from. It helps people to pay attention to things better. But at the same time, we should just pay attention in general. It, it's it's our world in general yeah. that needs to pay attention to what's going on and that shouldn't take a 15 minute funny clip to make you realize oh shit something's happening <laughs> right I mean well I don't think they're mainly talking about news necessarily well, yeah, information but, that could be true. anything like teaching someone something 
you know, things like that. I mean, that, that's mixing information and entertainment. Yes. So if you do something in an entertaining way that informs, there's no, I don't see a problem. It's not but hurtful, but, I, if, right. but if you're misinforming them and you're making right. entertainment, yeah, yeah, so now absolutely. that entertainment stuck with them thing. forever. Right, which is why, I, again, only agreed as yeah. opposed to strongly agreed. Because there is that other aspect. We're not just talking about news in this case. Yeah. What I am seeing over the years... And this is, okay, I, you know, I'm growing up with TV. This is still, you know, we're talking 1970s. You know, TV is still, you know, it's still growing. And in its heyday, we're seeing new technology coming out. I remember laser discs coming out. <laughs> I remember that too, Careful, though. your age is showing. <laughs> I remember that too, but I was much younger than you, I'm sure. So. Um, no, no, I'm talking about not CDs. Mm. I'm talking about the big laser Oh, yeah, that's way older. Picture than me, yeah. disc. Movies were coming out on discs the size of records, <laughs> and you would put them yeah, okay, in a big yeah, player. That's definitely right? older than me. Yeah. Um, this is when I was a kid. and um, But one thing that I've seen over the decades is that with the advent of social media and how much of a voice everyone now has, our entertainers now have a much louder voice mm -hmm. and much more <laughs> uh, visibility to yeah. the outside world. And we are seeing points in time where celebrities, iconic individuals, can shape a culture. So when you talk about individual cultures and individual mindsets springing up more and more and fracturing this country, these this entertainment delivery of any kind of education, information, can be negative when it shapes that culture and shapes how they think, especially when you... Jim Carrey is an excellent example, and don't get me wrong, I love that he's being an activist right now with his art, but Jim Carrey has a lot of for the, the regular term now, followers. You know, back in the day, when someone had followers, you were wanting somebody to go in before Jim Jones made them drink the Kool-Aid. <laughs> yeah. Right. These kind of people can shape a culture. Jim yeah. Carrey is being a very loud voice in opposition to everything Trump right now. And... Um, you know, he's borderline crossing the line in some of the things he says, but he is shaping opinions and many are doing it on a regular basis. And it is to me a scary thing that they can have so much impact. You changing um, and, that and as, no, as, I, as I she said, that. was when people are going to get their news from entertainment sources, the, the Bill Mars and yeah. the, the John Olivers and, you know, the Stephen Colbert's and the, the John Stewart's. When you're Kim going, K. Right. When you're <laughs> going to get inter, inter, your news in the same way you get your entertainment, you know, no wonder they can jump saying, on the fake news bandwagon. And even, I, I understand what you're saying, but we're making yeah. the, the point of but why. Inter but entertaining children to teach them things has been going on for decades. We right. were doing that. Schoolhouse Rock was the shit. Yeah. I learned about how a bill became law. Do you remember the song? Through entertainment. I'm just a bill. I, <laughs> it is a way of delivering information. It's a very smart way, but when you try, that's delivering education versus delivering information information is what people are making opinion but what off is of education other than the dissemination no. of information okay so i mean that so and again i'm not it's the difference between schoolhouse be good it's the no, difference no, between we understand that. it's the difference between schoolhouse rock and potus tweets okay yeah I mean, it's, that's the difference in I guess education. You could call his tweets entertaining. If, you could definitely call his but tweets entertaining. He's a celebrity. But you don't want Twitter to be entertained. But can you call it, can he's you call a celebrity. It he he. All of his everything he is is based on celebrity status. He is the most iconic example of how celebrity is shaping culture and what we do. Okay, let's move on to the next one. All right, people are ultimately divided more by class than by nationality. I disagree. I agree. I agree with that as well. I agree. We are divided more by how much we make, how where we live, yeah. how we live, than by anything else, honestly. Yeah. I, I would have said that that was true 20 years ago, 30 years ago. At this point, I'm seeing much more division in our country coming from inequality based around nationality, race, 
and all of the you know the subcategories underneath that we're dividing ourselves right now we're self dividing and self segregating our society mm -hmm. right now into our isms I and see that. yeah but and, and, and a lot of this is moved by nationality it's asking uh what you know uh what is more what divides us more and I think it is class. Still, over it's still class, and else. that's sad to say, is we are dividing ourselves well, in a different way. You, but class is still dividing us more. If you yeah. look at it from the standpoint of green privilege, yes, I would agree with yes. that. Well, that's um, your thing. When you're so. when you're talking I mean, about money <laughs> driving like the world, agree. but when we're talking about this country, I think currently we're in a we're at a point where that that is shifting. You know, it's you know, there's there's more to hate now than who's making more money than who. Money's not the focus anymore. It's who we are as people and individuals now that is coming under more attack than anything, in my opinion. I mean, online, yeah. but I mean, in my current stance, IRL, that's where I see things. Yeah. Um, controlling inflation is more important than controlling unemployment. I have to kind of agree with this one. I yeah. kind of agree, too. They kind of do go hand in hand. I agree as well, yeah. I mean, this goes back to regulating business, yeah. right? You know, if you can't regulate your prices to, keep, well, you to can't, stay within you can't regulate a living unemployment. wage. I mean, that's very difficult to regulate yeah. unemployment. That means you're basically you have to force somebody to hire someone. I mean, that... Yeah, but, you, <laughs> that doesn't really... I, but not to get too off topic, but don't we make them do that anyway? Like, there's there there's regulations for certain things to make... So you have to have X amount of black people, X amount of Hispanic people, X uh, amount no, of women. Actually, actually, quotas are illegal in this country, um, but affirmative action does exist and does... Yeah, know, do that's things, what... But, but it's not a quota, like... like yeah, but saying, I'm saying, but it, but it looks do better do for the company places, principally. And places like the UK, they do actually have yeah. diversity quotas. And, uh, you know, I mean, I disagree with that as well, but that can be a totally different... Yeah, totally <laughs> different, different topic. topic. Well, <laughs> I, I, can, I can go on ad nauseum. But... I, can, I can tell you this. This is something that I, I, I've pretty much been in the same place for most of these years, simply from the standpoint that ever since I've started working, back mm -hmm. when minimum wage was three something an hour, four dollars an hour, yeah, um, the cost of living was different. Was has different, never yeah. no, it's never been equitable. Yeah. yeah, and it's only gotten worse. I've never seen an equitable situation. It's just in my opinion, that's what has been. Right, um, because corporations cannot be trusted to voluntarily protect the environment, they require regulation. I strongly agree with this. I strongly agree as well. <laughs> you guys, I disagree. You disagree? disagree? I disagree. Why? Because, again, it comes back down to more principles. Uh, morals? And, uh, yeah. <laughs> but you where have they ever have shown morals? those before? I, I think the the onus is on the people who use these corporations to stop them from doing that. And not oh, so you're going them. back to so, education. <laughs> education? What do you mean? You're, so they have to be educated on how the business runs and how they feel about certain things, right? But you're well, really, I mean, when it's shown that they're doing something harmful to the environment and that's something that you care about, you're not going to use your dollar at that business anymore. Hold on. I have to, I have to point out one fallacy in your thinking right. here that I hope you can grasp. Um, that that is a very centrist viewpoint for your generation okay. in that you have lived in a, a lifetime of these things being regulated. And the reason they had to be regulated was because the greed and disrespect hey, of nice. these companies to do anything about the waste that they were doing. And even after regulations were in place, companies still move outside of those regulations to to spill their poison into the ground and they don't care about regulations until they get caught and right. if it weren't for the need for regulation they wouldn't be there so that that's a fair point uh i do see that point uh yeah you're right i, I haven't been alive before uh you know think that the epa were around mm -hmm. um but at the same time as you just pointed out that hasn't worked uh, that's not to say it hasn't worked. It's Not every company is breaking the rules. Right. There are lots of companies that are staying on top of their thing. They're doing the right things based on the regulations that were put in place. They play nice. But there are still companies that don't so, do it. So let me ask you then. But that quick. doesn't how mean do you, throw the, can, uh, the how child do you feel, out of the how do, feel about, how do you feel about uh, like grocery stores and restaurants who toss out uh, meat and stuff like that that has expired? Uh, that has gone not expired, but has gone past the the fresh by date. Like they have a certain sell by date. So how do you feel about them tossing that out and not 
giving it to you know some charity or another, uh, and that's due to regulation that, that they have to do that. They must throw it out as food opposed to giving handling? it away. Oh. Yeah, of course. That, <laughs> it's that's, <neat. laughs> that's protecting the. As that's protecting to, the as opposed citizenry. to giving it to charities who can feed. People no, that's for protecting free. people from getting sick. bad product and no, getting no, no, sick. No, no, no. Meat is not go, does mm. not go bad at the sell by date. No, it doesn't. But it. But once the store passes it on to somebody else, they hand off the responsibility for the meat. Right. So, um, but they're still liable. For what if happens something that happens with them, so maybe they skipped a date. Maybe something got in there that was, you know, had gone over, even though the the sell by date was still uh, within a day or mm-hmm. hadn't even hit yet. If no. it accidentally goes out, they're liable. So these are self regulating things where they don't put themselves and other people at risk. And I'm in agreement with that from the simple standpoint. And this goes back to simple capitalism. They paid for that shit. They can do with it what they want. But they can't. As far as disposing of it, as long as it's disposed of properly. But the, yeah, exactly. They can't do whatever they want with it because well, they can't give it, it to okay. a charity. They can't like. Well, you know, they can't pass it to the oh, homeless some guy can, outside. No, Publix no, does I do it. have a problem. With our that. superstores. But they can't do it. Our so I do have a problem with the homeless with, guy outside. With, with certain products, you <laughs> can do it. Like, um, so take Publix and Walmart for instance. Yeah. Their breads. They are able to donate bread products. Okay. No matter what okay. the expiration. They are able to recycle. Probably rec- because they, they don't go bad. They're able to recycle so fatty products. They're able to recycle some of the meat product that they're dealing with. They're able to find avenues to resource this yeah. out and actually make a buck off of it too. In you know, and since the they couldn't sell it. to be taxed. So. Too. These mm-hmm. things are allowable to a certain extent. It just has to fall within the right parameters and it has to be handled the right way. And it's when companies don't follow the regulations that are put in place for your safety, my safety, and the environment's safety that we have issues. Yeah. And they will always, greed has always proven to win out. If it costs too much money to dispose of this the regulated way, if I can get away with it, I'll do it some way else. Yeah. So I don't. I don't have an additional argument other than what I've already given. But I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna change my answer for now. Maybe change. I'll change it next time we take. You will. Test. You will. One of these days. When, <laughs> when, Robert's when, like, I'm going to make you. When you, know, when you realize my, there's no other point. planet. John. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Um, all right. So uh, what is this next? It says from each according to his ability to each according to his need is a fundamentally good idea. I more or less disagree with this. Um, I not strongly disagree, but I do disagree. I, I disagree as well. I agree. Um, because it, well. it is fundamentally a good idea. However, every time it's been implemented, I mean, this is this it is doesn't straight work from in practice. Yeah, yeah, this is straight from Marx. I right. mean, as, as it's you a, see, any it's any a tenet that I've never been able to stand fully behind. I understand yeah. the basics yeah. of it, but so know. I think yeah, I think we're all yeah. in agreement to disagree about this. <laughs> all right, disagree it's a again. sad <laughs> reflection on our society that something as basic as drinking water is now a bottled branded consumer product. Um, I have to. I have to strongly. Well, I'm. Well, I'm going to agree with it. I'm going to yeah, agree. If you're with hesitating, it. you obviously don't have a strong opinion. Because you know my mind, I'm like instantly, instantly, thirty seven devil advocate pops up. And they're like, <laughs> hey, listen to us, and we yeah, all have yeah. different opinions, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to disagree uh, with that because I do think that it's. I mean, it's a good thing. I mean, if you, you know, it's, it makes it easier to carry water around. I, but I think you're, you have to think about it as a sad reflection on our society. This is yeah, what we've come to. I, I don't strongly, think it's a sad reflection. I feel like it, water should be free. <laughs> well, it's a basic right. human need. We can't survive without yeah, it. it. Three days, we're dead. <laughs> but but uh, I think this is speaking more to our society is still isn't even at a point where we can have free easily accessible clean water we have muddied the water so much over our lifetime that in this world that we have to pay for clean, clean water, water. We're do that where, uh, where i live on I'm, a planet that's 70 percent water say, i'm not gonna say what town it is but where i live they actually have regulations your precious regulations to keep tap water clean where we take, used to live you can actually pay. pour it out of the glass sure. into the sink okay you know, or from the sink to the glass and drink it, and it's it's just like any other bottle. Where bottle we of water used to without live, any kind of filter. The town in which we used to live, I'm not going to name it. Um, we had to get a water filter system for the water that coming from the tap because we could not drink it. Literally, my parents came over for Thanksgiving, and everybody who drank the water because we didn't know about it yet 
got sick. My mom got horribly sick. I got horribly sick, and so did my sister. All got horribly sick from drinking the tap water because we didn't know. We got a, a, a water filter with a tester attached to it, and we saw that our water was absolutely undrinkable, disgusting, yeah. boil so watering it, status. It sounds like the free market can come up with a, uh, a, a solution to that by bottling water and selling. But it to that's you. the. I guess that's bottling the point of the question. Does that not? It does it not make you a little sad that we've gotten to this point in our point. society that we have so that we have to bottle and sell it? You don't you really know. need. I mean, you're going to buy a filter for your house. Or it whatever, doesn't. It, you know, okay, so now we need a filter for our house. The plan is seventy. Still should make you sad. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 and and one of the things that you must have to survive, yeah. you have to pay for. It's next. It, you have to pay for food too, and you need well, that sure. To you don't have to pay Actually, for food. You can go grow your own. Not easily, but yeah. I mean, uh, tell me it's not easy, John. My wife does it all the time. She can grow food at a heartbeat. Yeah. I mean, I grew up on a farm. Don't tell me it's not easy. I know it's not easy to be a farmer. No, it's, it's not, not easy, it's not but easy, but it's not. But it's not. It's a very simple thing to right, do. Right, right. But also, when you're talking about like a, you know, an urban area, you're not going to have the space you need for a farm. You might have like a windowsill that you could put okay. a garden on. It just a little, speaks. Like, windowsill I think it garden, speaks to our humanity. Yeah. I mean, if I look at our society I mean, as a global society, so wait, it speaks to our. Can we look at the question again? Because. I know it says it's a sad reflection on our society that something as basic as drinking water is now a bottled, brandy consumer product. So it's not saying that it needs to be, but that it is. But it's the, sad right. that it's already that happening. The, the fact that it is happened is what's supposed to be a sad reflection. Yeah. Uh, and I disagree I, with that. I guess okay. knowing that they are actually selling canned air... <laughs> this pure, this pure oxygen that they actually sell it in cans. That's a Spaceballs reference for people who don't uh, who don't know. But it's a real <laughs> thing happening. Like there's a company that got a Kickstarter and they have started moving forward selling canned air from the mountains <laughs> at a high price and as a commodity. But okay. the the, I mean, the the trickle down from that, I mean, you think as if you move want into to waste their money on that, I mean, their, they can waste their money on I mean, canned air. We, I feel <laughs> just we need like to if be, you don't we need to be more responsible. Filter, you can get bottled water. Um, all right, next question. Land should not be a commodity to be bought and sold. I can't answer this first. I disagree. Uh, land should not be a commodity. Uh, my Native American roots say we should not sell our land. Our it, it, it's human. It's there Earth. There it is. There it is. There's it's the problem. And but Earth. we but, that, <laughs> but, I, I but think think about it from the is. standpoint that. Um, that heritage, you know, it, it, that we come from, was also a, a, a culture that was nomadic, constantly That's moving true. for the most part. Not most of them, them were. Not, not all of them, them but most of them, them were. Yeah. Right. But while at the same time there were groups, as I was going to say, that were territorial and yeah. they, they, they owned, as they it were, their they land. They occupied um, their land, which made them own it. But, because there was no, like, and then we other. started beating it. See, I don't, I don't know. Well, I, I mean, that's why you had things like the Iroquois Nation. I don't agree uh, started, that we should be the Iroquois Confederacy. Uh, Confederacy, I believe they were a confederacy, and uh, I mean they had wars over mm, you land. know their lands and their no, their herds, you know, herding grounds and stuff like that. And, uh, over in the in the west, uh, the Sioux nations did that, where they would fight over more instead of land, they would fight over the herds that were moving. As they move well, with it, and other tribes would move with the herd as well. They would fight each other over that. I mean, people are always going to fight over resources. Um, I and so I'd rather it be sold or bought rather than you know. Um, actually, <laughs> well, I, I, over it. Defended, well, defended, you know, I would, I, I would actually dis go ahead and disagree with this, and and I will. I just I'll make this quick. Strongly, I, I, I'll, by the way, Henry. Strongly, <laughs> I will. I will go ahead and say this is basically my reasoning and this is and this is an evolved standpoint from my political aspect is that um no land is ever actually yours when you buy it anyway because yeah. as every step of government tears up somebody has eminent domain over the Someone's land that got, you yeah. supposedly purchase i mean the house we're sitting in right now there which is no owned I, land here no matter what they say I, I disagree with eminent domain as well but so there you go so for me, um, because no, no one should be able to take your property. I, like I said, I disagree with the statement. It, sh you know, it, because it, it it does need to be a commodity that's bought or sold in this present time. It is something that has to happen. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able. To, it's how we're set up. Yeah, right. True, because if 
You can't live without it. Someone could easily just walk into your home and be like, so you don't if, own this if, land, I'm going to be here now. Right, I'm a realist about <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So if I had my druthers from when I was younger, I'd be like, all you white folks need to get off our land. <laughs> right? But if, if we're talking about how we would have answered it, you know, previously, uh, I would have actually agreed with it uh, previously back in my, like I said, back in my lefty days. <laughs> uh, I would have agreed that, you know, Oh man, no one can own the land, man. You know, uh, yeah, that that would have been my take on it. But um, as I've you know grown really... and developed uh, my uh, philosophical and political view, uh, I now yeah disagree with that statement. I really am excited to see where we all fall because we we all have different opinions on so strong points. <laughs> yeah. um, all right, next question. It is regrettable that many personal fortunes are made by people who simply manipulate money and contribute nothing to their society. I have this one. I have to. I have to agree with. Um, while I don't, I don't criticize somebody for making money. Um, I do have a problem that with so many people just making money piggybacking off of someone else doing something that third party rule where you're just you know mlms are a great example of this where they never actually transact any product they just get people below them selling the same same speech over and over yeah. to where everybody underneath is doing something but the gurus are sitting around actually doing nothing the pyramid um, right <laughs> yeah, you pyramid. know they sit at the, near the top of the pyramid and they manipulate money but the problem is is it drives a lot of times it drives the cost of goods up and services yeah so i'm going to agree as well same only because it says it is regrettable i mean the fact that people can do it i mean good for them right. you mean, know if i could do it i would do it as well so i mean i'm not gonna sit there and disagree not with gonna it. knock on something you would do yeah yourself. i mean if I, if I could do it i would do it but i but can't so in a I, utopian society so we wouldn't have instead. to worry about that you know? question. <laughs> all right protectionism is sometimes necessary in trade this one I'd have to, I think I need to understand what they mean by protectionism. Yeah, I mean, protectionism, I mean uh, well, look, yeah, definition. he's going to look it up, but protectionism is uh, looking out to your own country's interests, especially in trade. Before, Shielding one's country? Uh, Domestic. From the foreign competition by taxing imports. Okay. <laughs> okay. So yeah. protect your own industry by taxing imports. So imports tariffs. that would come. Ta so yeah. Okay, so I have to say that. Um, I, this one I have to disagree with only from the standpoint that it doesn't drive down the cost of goods within your country just to tax the goods uh, coming in from another country higher and making them more expensive. Just because you make them more expensive doesn't make it easier to buy the products here and make the products right, but here I mean, it's not at just a cheaper tariffs, rate. Right? It's, sure, it's also but the whole goal is to make it more expensive to buy it from elsewhere than to get it here in your country. But that doesn't drive, necessarily drive down the cost of goods till there's enough competition for that product to drive down the cost of goods. I'm going to hit agree on this one. Um, yeah, I'm going to hit, I'm going to say agree as well. Just because I, I, your statement hit me, like, because just because they, they tax it differently doesn't change the way that we're going to buy it necessarily. Um, mm -hmm. Being, I just don't it's think it's, I don't think it serves the purpose that the tool is used for that it's meant for. I, right. I agree with that. And and when I was younger, I wouldn't have given two shits. Oh yeah, about protectionism. <laughs> as long as what I was buying was cheap, I didn't care. Yeah, in fact, I didn't know what protectionism was until the first time I took this test. Right. So I had, yeah, to, I had to look it up too. Yeah, <laughs> the power of Google. <laughs> but I understand the principle, and I like yeah. I said, just doesn't work all the time. The only social responsibility of a company should be to deliver a profit to its shareholders. Strongly disagree. Strongly disagree. <sighs> that sucks because I, I have to agree, but I don't like that they have the should there. If they put is, I would agree more strongly. The only social responsibility, a, uh, <laughs> and scroll up a little bit. Uh, yeah, the only social responsibility of a company is to uh, deliver a profit to its shareholder. That I largely agree, or more strongly agree with. But uh, yeah, I mean, a company doesn't have a responsibility, any kind of social responsibility. The only responsibility they have is to make money. 
And if they and if they were smart, then they will, uh, you know, Against use that. Against morals again? We're going back to your morals again? We're going the to the principle, yes. But I'm going to stand on principle. <laughs> that's, the, how, that's how principles but, work. But that defeats, <laughs> that defeats the, the purpose of the community. A company is a part of a community that it is in. Because yeah. it employs the people of the community and it supplies goods and services to that community. So yeah. it should be a... a a, we, a well represented part of that community as well. They have a responsibility to be part no, and take part in the community as well. I don't think it has a responsibility to do so, but I do think that it should do so. But I'm not going to try and tell them that they have to. I, so, but that, you know, it doesn't say anything about, you know, legislating that. But I think it is a moral. Yeah, resp- I, I think it should. should be a moral responsibility, a moral responsibility and social sure. to be uh, to take on the social responsibility sure. of being in a community. I agree it with that. If they phrased it like that, I would have agreed with you. You're, you're not. But you're, how it's phrasing it, I'm not going to. I'm going to. I think agree. it's phrased that way to make you think about your answer before you put it in. To right. be honest. Are we ready for the next one? Sure, let's move on. Uh, the rich are too highly taxed. <laughs> oh, strongly disagree. <laughs> strongly disagree with that one. I normally disagree with that. Even with the recent tax change? I normally disagree. Okay, moving Go on. <laughs> moving on. <laughs> no more arguing. <laughs> Those with the ability to pay should have access to higher standards of medical care. Of course. What? Yeah. Higher if can, standards? If you can pay for it, you deserve to have better me- uh, medical care. No. Okay. Ask somebody who has medical problems. Yeah. <laughs> I should have I'm the same saying... quality and same standard of doctors as anybody. I mean... So, I... <laughs> so sorry, if the best that, heart I... doctor is the only one that can save your mom or dad from That's dying... Not necessarily just because he's but, the But you best. can't afford it. They're going to do that uh, transplant anyway. They're going to do whatever surgery right. they have to do anyway. So the, the surgery is going to get done either way. They have to take you because of the Hippocratic Oath. The doctor cannot let you come to harm under their care but if they we can should, prevent it. But I should be able to expect that. Regardless, what if that doctor is not well enough trained to prevent it? Then that's the academy's problem. That's the doctor, the whoever, uh, whatever medical school, uh, medical school they went to. You know, medical board, right? Oh, the medical board's fault now. Well, okay, yeah, if so they allow someone who's not qualified to become a doctor, then yes. Yeah, I'm sorry, fault. my arm, the surgeon I had for my arm was the cheapest that we could afford at the time, and it has screwed my arm forever. I can barely open a bottle, and this because this screw goes sideways. The doctor that I could afford was not of the quality that I personally feel that I deserved. Okay, I mean... Or needed. At, or or needed. actually, because it, now it's forever going to encumber this. Okay. I mean, but I, I, again, you know, if you can afford to have higher but standard part, of medical care, then you should but get But part of this standard. speaks to the fact that if I go to a hospital and I need something done with my heart, yeah. and the only doctor that's currently available that could come in immediately and save my life yeah. has too high of a price tag, and so he can refuse it. service. No, he can't refuse service. I'm sorry, does that fall under the Hippocratic Oath that yes, he doesn't, does. he doesn't have does. to get yes. paid? No, no, it His falls rate? under the Hippocratic Oath that he cannot uh, let you come to harm without him trying to prevent it while you're under his care. So Regardless I'm going to be in debt for the rest of my life? Uh, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't like it. I'm not saying I mean, just because thing, he's but... in the hospital, he has to help me? <laughs> yes. Even though he's up there and I'm yes. in the emergency ward? If he's the, only, if he's the only one in your hypothetical, if he's the only one who's able to do it, yes, it falls on him to do it. Because, I, because okay, because that sounds like to me the avoidance of having to carry out that. Um, but so I my, dis- my answer is I agree. disagree with this. My answer Andrew. is agree. My answer is not changing. <laughs> That's fine. I'm not trying. I'm not trying to convince anyone. Oh, I know. We're, no, we're, no. We're doing, I know. We're just giving our explanation. Um, yeah. Government should penalize businesses <laughs> that mislead the public. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I I strongly agree with this. I I, I, I regular agree. I, I regularly agree. I regular agree, um, and I have I've been this I've been this way for many years, um, and only because I've seen, um, you know, during the advent of some of these, uh, you know, MLM scams and schemes mm-hmm. 20, 30 years ago. When uh, I don't know if you like Amway, Amway, you ever heard Amway, of it? Yeah. I was back oh when Amway was starting up and booting into a real thing before it just became a. I had someone try to recruit right? me for Amway before. Right. Yeah, yeah. We, I think and we they, all have. At one point. They always they always start off with like. You know, you seem like a really smart guy. 
you know, they always start off with that. And as soon as you hear that, you're like, all right, I'm out. Or my favorite line is, you only have one stream of income? You need more than one. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Uh, A genuine free market requires restrictions on the ability of predator multinationals to create monopolies. Um, I'm going to, I, I know it might, uh, be contrary to what I've said before, but I do regular agree with this only because a monopoly then will turn the market into not a free market. I yeah, I, I think I, I, I would have to, I would have to strongly agree with that I because agree. from the simple standpoint that a monopoly and free market don't go together. That's right. That's yeah, not a free you, market. A monopoly, it's, not, it's not a free market, right? Um, yeah, this is something that yeah, this is something that would have never crossed my mind many years ago. Other than playing Monopoly, <laughs> never really understanding what a true Monopoly was. Right. It wasn't until I hit college that I actually truly understood the Monopoly. Honestly. All right. The freer the market, the freer the people. I strongly agree with this. From, I strongly agree. With this. I would have. I have to agree with this from the standpoint that in 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 blanket. Terms. Statement. The context of the statement yeah. is a beautiful philosophy, and yes, if if that is actually, but I mean, it's true. Whether or not that freedom you, is a good thing or not, whether it leads to, you know, uh, oppression I, by corporations, if you want to go with that, you know, it, it still makes you freer as a as a person. So uh, that is absolutely true, and I do strongly agree. I don't know that, that we've ever, I've ever seen a, a, an actual working model of a free market. Yeah, uh, yeah. Really, you have to go. You have to go pretty far back in history to find an actual legitimately free market. Is that isn't that kind of like uh, what? uh, uh, What was the show? Uh, I can't remember the movie. Some Disney thing. Yeah. Um, Insightful. Abortion, when the woman's life is not threatened, should always be illegal. you get me to go on either side of the abortion issue, <laughs> I, and I'm going to give you a strongly a degree. I, I strongly disagree, disagree with anybody else's opinion for the most part. I strongly yeah. disagree. I, I disagree. A woman's body is her own. I strongly disagree. I'm leave it at that. I think <laughs> yeah, this is this is not an issue that we as individuals should be having. It's a, a decision left to the individual. All authority should be questioned. Strongly agree. Strongly, strongly agree. agree. I think we all. Yeah. <laughs> That didn't take once, long at all. Once upon a time, I would have strongly disagreed with that. I have to really? ask, what changed that view? Because that's a strong yeah, view. Yeah, because you've always been advocated raised, off my yeah. for authoritarianism was, in different, I, different ways. I was raised in an environment where you never questioned anything. You didn't talk about anything. That's a generational you, gap coming through. No, yeah. no, 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 no. I was raised in an environment. My grandmother was an alcoholic, and uh, she she beat us daily. Mm-hmm. Um, we didn't have an opinion. We didn't have um, we we didn't have a voice. Um, and you know, I learned that to speak out was bad. You know, I tried to talk. And say that things were happening to me because my grandfather was a pedophile as well. Mm-hmm. He loved little boys, and uh, I found out that talking didn't work. So I learned at that early age that there's no point. There's but, no point. Yeah. There's no point. So this was my mindset for a long time. Even it, it took it took my own uh, my own you know uh, journey through the abyss Mm -hmm. for a decade to open my eyes to realize that yeah you've got to question these fuckers yeah (laughs) you've got you've got to stand up and ask them what the hell are you thinking yeah what the hell is wrong with you absolutely um an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth i disagree Uh, i disagree i can agree with it to a certain extent Uh, taxpayers should not be expected to prop up any theaters or museums that cannot survive on a commercial basis. I strongly disagree with that. I, we I must agree. support the arts. I agree with that. I disagree. I think I think the arts are part of a community, part of a culture. It is yeah. necessary that the community support those things well, through their dollars them. and donations. Then they should support them. Yeah, and your tax dollars do it. Well, okay, sometimes you have to force going, it because if everybody's selfish, museum, you going to the museum supports it as well. 
I don't, I'm also, it didn't ask, but, but I'm yeah, also of the mind that museums should be open forum for people to go and experience the arts. I mean, yeah. I don't think there should be a fee to see what's in a museum. Uh, schools should not make classroom attendance compulsory. Bullshit. <laughs> I strongly disagree with that. Yeah, I'm going to regularly disagree. I'm going to regularly disagree. Um, Is that, I mean, I, I would, again, not for, you know, regulations, but at the same time, I, I assume we're talking about public schools. Yeah. Which, if we're talking about public schools, then, yeah, obviously we can put, you know, regulations on that. But uh, for like a private school or, you know. Well, was, school, was it broad? Like was it very broad in what it said about yeah, the schools? Yeah, it just said I mean, schools. Schools. Said schools. Well, so okay. That, so it's all encompassing. Right. And um, I still think the classroom component needs to be there. Um, and, and I'm looking at it as a little more broad based. Okay. So we can have a classroom via computer yeah. now, right? Yeah. Um, that needs to be a component because as children are going through the lower levels grades and coming into the high school grades and even going into the college grades, there's a fundamental lesson that ne is being taught there for when you go out into the real world. Yeah. And that is a work environment. It's showing up every day right. to work. Yeah, and you need absolutely. to understand, you know, they need to that. take that lesson of repetitiveness away of coming together, working together to accomplish something, Atomic this guy. kind of thing, because yeah. this is easily going to translate to most of their lives once they walk away from school oh, yeah. and education. Absolutely. So it should be a mandatory part of any education. And you yeah. should want that kind of thing in your education for your children oh, yeah. to teach them that. So you don't have to try and figure out a way to teach them how to do that when they've never experienced it. Yeah, no, I agree yeah. with that. All right. Uh, all people have their rights, but it is better for all of us that different sorts of people should keep to their own kind. <laughs> I, <laughs> what are they talking about? Um, <laughs> different sorts of people. I strongly, I just strongly disagree there because when it's Strong, saying all sorts, yeah. it's just it's yeah, fracturous I, I, more. Fracturous I, yeah. more. Break us apart, guys. Disagree. Break us. <laughs> Good parents sometimes have to spank their children. Strongly agree. I agree. I, re I regular agree. I regular, yeah. It is natural for children to keep some secrets from their parents. I agree. I agree, yeah, I do agree. but I don't agree that they should. <laughs> yeah, well, as a, as I a dad, so. I'll agree I mean, to disagree I, here. <laughs> as someone who kept a lot of secrets for their parents, yeah. I, right. I feel I, that some, I, you have, it's part of making your individuality. You can't. Yeah. Right. How do you have your own identity? If, if you're you always, keep, if, you know, you know. If you're sharing it with everybody, right. Uh, possessing marijuana for personal use should not be a criminal offense. Strongly, Strongly agree. agree. Thank you. Moving on. <laughs> yeah. Moving on. <laughs> any kind of... Please don't infer anything from those comments. <laughs> the prime function of schooling <laughs> should be to equip the future generation to find jobs. I, I agree. strongly agree I with agree. this. I regularly agree with this because I also want people to learn how to think. For themselves Ask yeah, that's questions an important and part sure. but i don't think this that the school is well equipped for that i think that's something that you either have to do on your own or you know maybe your parents teach or maybe maybe an enterprising you know teacher will teach you that but well for it, the most part they, they usually I, don't i i would just hope that most people don't get pigeonholed in that question in seeing that it's yeah. you know very specific to getting them an education to go get a, a, a monday job, nine yeah. to five job yeah. because when i see that a child has been taught to be creative and flows into a job as a, a great artist mm -hmm. that's a profession that's yeah. still pursuing Absolutely. a dream and accomplishing a job Absolutely. right so yes it should all be geared to that because yeah. life's coming that's fair mm -hmm. schools you're only rehearsal <laughs> for it yeah, yeah. Uh, people with serious inheritable disease disability should not be allowed to reproduce what i disagree i disagree like, and again, this goes down to my principles, right? I, I'm not going to tell someone what they can and can't do, and they better not do the same to me. And most of them me. think twice before <coughs> reproducing, honestly, because they, yeah. they know the struggle they've been through. But no one should be denied the, the right to... Yeah, absolutely. Because you're, it's not a proven fact that they automatically go, will. Yeah, go ahead, Robert. Give us the, uh, give us the argument for you, I, Phoenix. I just <laughs> have to ask, um, is being... An idiot fucktard. <laughs> does that count as an inheritable yes. disability? Yes, it, does. it does. Just just being a full on idiot yes. in society. Yeah, that counts it, it because does. you're raising another idiot. So. Right. 
<laughs> no, no, they might not necessarily inherit that yeah. disease, but they're they're a carrier. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then I can only disagree with this. Right. <laughs> I cannot strongly disagree because I do prefer that Darwinism win out sometimes. <laughs> All right, the most important thing for children to learn is to accept discipline. I strongly agree with this. I disagree. I, I regularly regular agree. Disagree. I regularly disagree. I regularly agree. Their entire life when they walk yes. out into the world is going to be about Action accepting the this discipline no, of... it's true. But I'm talking about the accepting the discipline of regulation and law yeah. and taxation. Every one of these things is a discipline. The discipline of life and the yeah. things that are going to have to happen. I, I think it's more important to teach children how to think critically and think for themselves and that allow them to come to the... Uh, conclusions of doing the things that discipline would do otherwise so they're still gonna get disciplined well yeah i mean sure of course yeah I mean, but look at the but, but i guess what the question to me is um the important thing for children to learn is you have to accept the, the most right, important right. thing which i don't okay. think i don't think that i think that it is important but i don't think it is the most important thing but that means you need to accept discipline in everything you do yeah. You know, just in how you live your life, in, you know, mm -hmm. all those discipline aspects. And you have yeah. to be able to accept that discipline. I just don't or think you're... it's the most important thing. Okay. That's all. I, yeah, I think I, it's more I, important to think a child, uh, to, uh, I, know, I guess I look, to teach a child how to think. I look back at my undisciplined youth, um, you know, whenever I was, you know, uh, in my late teens, early 20s. And I think, you know, I wasn't. I, I was taught how to accept abuse, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I was taught. I wasn't taught how to accept discipline. Um, but I understood what discipline was supposed to be because yeah. I knew what other people got for actual discipline. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I didn't learn to accept it. I was rebellious and hellion and, and I did things that affected my future. So yeah. when I think about my children now, I think it is absolutely the most important thing they understand in life is how to accept discipline because discipline is, again, much like life, it's coming and it will impact you every single day of your life, how you discipline yourself and how you yeah. accept the discipline well, see, of the I, society you're in. I think discipline in. comes with thinking critically. I think if you truly think critically, the sure. discipline will be there. Which okay. is why it's inherent in education to yeah. teach critical thinking. Well, I, Again, wouldn't say, I wouldn't say that much. It's, well, I don't think that's true. I, I say it's inherent that it should teach this. Oh, it should, that yeah. does it, But that's not to say that they teach it properly. Yeah. yeah or or that it sinks in. <laughs> uh, there are no savage and civilized peoples. There are only different cultures. So that's not ac it's, it's taking it from a human standpoint. It's just talking about from a cultural standpoint. Yeah. Savages. I agree. And I disagree. Uh, I, I, um, there are no savage and civilized peoples. Um, I agree. Well, if we're talking about global... Yeah, yeah, we're talking about global. If we're talking globally, then I'm going to have to, um, I'm going to have to disagree with that to the extent that there are some, there are some savage cultures out there yeah. that don't give a fuck about human life outside Absolutely. of their own. Well, I mean, and they'll do anything to, to anybody. But that's their culture. What, what but that metric? Does, what, but what metric do you suggest to judge another culture other than your own? Right. We're civilized, so anything below that is, that is uncivilized. And, and they may, they may we do cover our genitalia when we walk into buildings, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and they may consider themselves to be civilized. They, so they, from their metric, we may be savage. Yeah, but the uh, only way to, in my opinion, at least, the only way to judge another culture is by your own. Surprisingly enough, I wasn't raised to be racist, so it's <laughs> so what really, happened? It just kind of happened later. I, on. I mean, it's well once I realized just how much racism there is out there for people who come mm -hmm. from different cultures yeah yeah it does make you a little bit racist yeah i mean you can't get away from it in this day and age it's everywhere yeah, i think it's true. part of who we are now it's you know part of our id <laughs> those who are able to work and refuse the opportunity should not expect society's support strongly agree strongly agree i, I agree with this well go ahead and change me to strongly agree the ec word expect is uh yeah um they should not expect to get the handouts well, right I have no problem with the with a safety net. Of course. You know, a social safety net. But 
to first of all expect it and then to also not work. So it says here, here right, you're you know, just those who are in. able to work and they refuse, refuse the opportunity. opportunity. They exactly. refuse the opportunities. You should not. Yeah. So it's sorry. it's the example Kick of rocks. you're done. Someone has been given a, an opportunity. They're just denying it and right. expecting and the that, government to take care a, of them. And that's okay. That one. That's yeah. why I'll say I yeah. strongly agree with that. I went ahead and changed to that. If that were out of there, I might be a little more on the fence it, about it. it. That would make a difference. But the wording is important. Right. Uh, when you are troubled, it's better not to think about it, but to keep busy with more cheerful things. Well, I generally I, agree with that. I agree. Regular agree. Especially things that you can't control. There's no use. You yeah. Know, uh, Some things are not our about hands. It. I've never known what it's like to not be anxious about and worried about pretty much everything that's going on in my head. I think about things all day long. Yeah. Um, I don't even know... I don't even know how not to think about it. Uh, so I, I, this is one of those. So how does that? Where does that put me on that scale? When I can't I have no point of reference, um, I don't know how to keep busy with more cheerful things. Kind of thing in my head, you know. It's like I'm still thinking about things even when I'm doing cheerful things. That same thing is just rolling, yeah. rolling, rolling. So, um, I guess it's better. So what? I might agree with it. I don't. <laughs> yeah. I'll go ahead and throw a degree out there just because I don't know. It's uh, you want to be a sheep. It's a very it's, that's a very odd thought to me. <laughs> <laughs> first generation with the majority opinion. Is right. that what we're going to go with right Christmas tree. It uh, first generation immigrants can never be fully integrated within their new country. I disagree. Um, with that. I, disagree. I absolutely strongly disagree with that. Um, I think they can actually become some of the most. You know, bedrock people in a country, That's whether they're makes... first generation or more. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. All right. What's good for the most successful corporations is always ultimately good for all of us. And I strongly I disagree, disagree with I that. Disagree. I disagree. You know, this goes back to what we were talking about earlier about yeah. corporations. Yeah. You know, the big corporations, they will they will lobby for things. Right. Well, that I mean, doesn't again, mean it's I... great for small businesses to be pulling the same shit yeah. that they're trying to get away with, you yeah. know, and what the well, impact that's why is going to be. I disagree here as well, even yeah. though, you know, I've, I've stuck up for the corporations and the past questions, but I'm not going to sit there and say that it's always going to be good for everyone. Yeah. So of course it's not. Greed is not going to be good for everyone. It's going to be good for the person who's being greedy. Dynamic viewpoint. Um, yeah. No broadcasting institution, however independent, its content should receive public funding. Agreed. I disagree with this. I also disagree. And I only say this from the standpoint of there should be, you know, I don't have a problem with community funded um, information sources, you know. You know, mm-hmm. call it PBS, whatever you want. Yeah. But if it's relevant to the current society, um, well, and I've always been a fan of those. I mean, PBS yeah. was something I've I grew up on. I've watched documentaries you know. from PBS. Yeah. I and I thought the that, content. you know, yeah. and, you know, and so, you know, now, I, and I'm not full on one way or the other, you know, like hardcore, simply yeah. because I know people do have their own motivations and mm-hmm. try and capitalize off of right. what people But do. I mean, for me, it goes back to the previous question about uh, museums and theaters being you know funded by taxpayers or holding themselves up and you know it's the same concept with media you know if you can't hold yourself up you don't deserve to be around right <clears throat> our civil liberties are being excessively curbed in the name of counter terrorism strongly agree I, I agree regular agree I want to say I have to go with agree and only from the standpoint that I see that civil liberties are being more strongly impacted in situations Effective. where it, when, when it happens, but your liberties aren't being curbed from the standpoint that there's a lot of things in that counterterrorism kind of, you know, the Patriot Act that mm-hmm. while it's there, it's not necessarily being enforced. It just hovers. But, it, but right? it's there. And right. And it can so, be used so, at any time. So it's just like, you know, it's okay. You know, it's a, there's a little bit of a gray area yeah, there. No, it's I, odd. <laughs> I strongly agree with that one. I know. I know. <laughs> a significant advantage of a one party state is that it avoids all the arguments that delay progress in a democratic political system. I strongly, strongly disagree, disagree with disagree. that. Yeah, strongly. I mean, strongly. get a group of people, whether they're all in the same party or a different party, differing parties, yeah. they'll never make up their mind. Never. It's, <laughs> it's really, yeah. Although the electronic age makes official surveillance easier, only wrongdoers need to be worried. Strongly, strongly disagree. disagree. I rather disagree. I strongly disagree. Mm. 
<laughs> now, the, now the, hold on. The Henry, ominous glare yeah. and grunt. Go back. Go, yeah, go, people yeah. at home couldn't see the look. <laughs> so, Robert just t- stared me down and grunted <laughs> like a bear. So, so you you think there's enough of a gray a gray area that uh, I mean I explain why you would agree versus strongly disagree. I'm just curious. So like, they're gonna listen, okay, and. They can take things as they please, like which they shouldn't be able to do. They shouldn't. I, I know they shouldn't be able to do, but so then you strongly disagree. <sighs> but she's yes. Go the ahead. question yeah, is: Is this falling to apathy? Maybe are you just <laughs> apathetic about yeah, it because you know they're taking it anyway? They are. <laughs> right. Like, it's it's the lesser of two evils, right? You uh, to yeah. to There's, agree versus strongly disagree. I, I mean. It's happening. So I'm like, not sh- I, I know. I, moving on. <laughs> it's tough, right? It's a, it's a it's hard bad. question because they they are going. They're listening. They're watching. They're seeing every move that we make, and I feel uncomfortable and comfortable at the same time, knowing that there's somebody who's going to be out there who's trying their hardest to protect us. Maybe not the best method. <laughs> right. So I guess yeah. my the reason why I most strongly I disagree. Big brother too, you know. <laughs> Just in case right. someone out there it's, is it's, listening, it's, uh, it's, uh, I for one love Big Brother, and uh, <laughs> I'm glad that he's watching over me. Every day the thing that makes me all our brothers. The, the, the thing that makes me strongly disagree <laughs> there is the standpoint that. While yes, I get that they're already they're already collecting all the data and they're using it to filter out the bad guys. Yes. What happens when they realize that? So out of all this data, they suddenly realize, oh look, how much of this thing that maybe we feel is a little bit morally corrupt is occurring. Now those people become wrongdoers as well. I, I see that. I do, but. I'd like to think in the back of my happy little brain here <laughs> that they're only looking for specific things. At the beginning. <laughs> when have we ever just looked for specific I things? I know, I know. Right? But I just... We were only looking for weapons of mass destruction. We wound up with a guy to hang. <laughs> and, and three countries. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not changing my answers. No, no, I, I'm not trying to. I just want to make sure that I see where you stand. Yeah. The death penalty should be an option for the most serious crimes. I, I, I hate having try, to try and give an opinion on this. I agree. I, I agree, and it's mostly from a fiscal standpoint rather than like a moral one. I mean, uh, it's because it costs uh, a jail about $40,000 a year per prisoner to keep them in prison. That's not why. <laughs> I'm, saying, I'm, I'm saying that's why. It's heinous crimes. The word serious is it's the serious. only thing that gets me. For the most it's serious crimes. The, like, most it's serious. the most serious. Like, there's certain things that you just don't come back from, to be honest. Yeah. Well, but, but that relies on us to hope that the people deciding what the most serious crimes are correct you know, well, and how, like how, how, how do we have a consensus? And it, so, how do we have a moral consensus in this country about what counts as the most so serious crimes? I'm assuming crime? this question is asking from our perspective whatever we would consider the most serious crimes is what we're supposed to apply to this. Right, but that, that doesn't qualify because. What I see is the most serious crime. I mean, are you gonna are you gonna agree that um, a wife beater should face the death penalty? No, I don't think. I so. fully yeah. agree that that son of a bitch needs to die. Really, so, in my again, heart of hearts, yeah. right? I if you if you harm a child in any way, shape, or form yeah. that damages them now or later, you you should die. I agree with that. But just throwing it out there. So but I know this is not this. right and proper in my mind. I know from a moral standpoint that's not right, and those aren't yeah, the most yeah. serious crimes. But to me, but they're still going to be in prison for either a long time or the these, rest of their lives. These questions that rely on a moral decision as to the right and wrong, or the severity of something, I should yeah. say, the severity of something. This weighs heavily on me because we will never all agree on this. Right. So then it does. That's one of those things. Yeah, shouldn't be federally regulated. Goes to states and whatever. I'll take it. My apathy from there. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to say um, I'm just going to say I kind of disagree with that. I don't really love the death penalty in the first place. Um, oh, and you know, back in the day, though, burn them, burn them all. <laughs> back, back in the day, it was the opposite. I, I would have, I would have strongly disagreed with that. Back in the day, I would have been, you know. 
Oh, every life has value, and everyone can be redeemed. And... Just gonna throw this out there. My dad's been talking. <laughs> I was, I was. <laughs> <you> know, like... <laughs> uh, in a civilized society, one must always have people above to be obeyed and people below to be commanded. I have to strongly agree with this. There needs to be a leader. So I have to, I have to regular agree with this, and I don't like it. I regular so, agree. I also don't like it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't like that. That's the case. But a, a hierarchy, which is what this is referring to. Is always going to exist, no matter what sure. you do. It's always, sure. always, going and even to if exist. it's a group, right? Even if it it's a group be, that yeah. sits at the top, it's still someone in control, right? right. And yeah. um, you know, this is. But now I've, so, I've I mean, but I, I grew in, up in a kind of a fuck the man kind of mindset. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, fuck I mean, the me man too. Now, back then, but right. you know, now, no, absolutely, me too. Now but even, like, no, even still, I'm still like that. But there is still somebody above, and there are people below. That's this, that's, that's that's a fact. That's not even like a moral the trick question. Is, that's a the, fact. The trick is is to make the people below you want to be followers. Yeah. Your followers. People follow who's worth following. Exactly. All right, abstract art that doesn't represent anything shouldn't be considered at all. Strongly disagree. Be I strongly art disagree. Um, I'm. I mean, I'm going to agree because I wouldn't consider it art. But that you, you, but you can't. I but what you consider art, right. may somebody else may not. Right. So they're just asking what I would consider <laughs> it, and I said I don't consider Careful it art. Careful, guys. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a, if someone that's, else wants to consider it art, fucking go crazy. I don't care. That's crazy. If you want to consider something, now art, you're just taking, art. you're just making this all about you. Well, oh, I mean, technically, it's supposed to be. Yeah. All right. In criminal justice, punishment <laughs> should be more important than rehabilitation. Strongly disagree. I strongly yeah, disagree. I strongly disagree. Rehabilitation well. should be the, the main it, point. Because those son of a bitches are coming back into society, right? <laughs> yeah, or presumably. Presumably, uh, it is a waste of time to try to rehabilitate some criminals. Agreed. Some criminals. Agreed. I would have to agree, agree. with this. Yeah. Some just aren't going to be able to right. be. I, but I, you can't say it based on the crime. I, I regularly agree with right. that one. I regularly agree as well. All right. Um, <clears throat> back in the day, I would. You know, I've I've been in jail. You know, I, yeah. I I had a felony, a couple of felonies come against me. Nothing major, but you know, I spent a little while in jail. Nothing like prison, but um, you know, it's uh, no. I there are people in there that just you know, rehabilitation would be the way they would get out. Yeah, um, there are people in there that are actually good Manipulate people. The that, well, no, not that manipulate the system. That are actually good people in jail for something. Yeah. You know, that if, if it was a rehabilitation thing as opposed to you just do this many days, okay. they could come out and be functional in society because what they did wasn't their heart of heart mm-hmm. desire. Yeah. There's a lot of people in jail that have done stupid do, things. For desperate reasons. Desperate, you know. stupid, whatever the yeah. case yeah. may be. A little rehabilitation sentence versus a specific sentence yeah. go a long way. Sure. The business person and the manufacturer are more important than the writer and the artist. I disagree with I that. Disagree. I strongly disagree. And I've always been think, that way. I don't think either of them are more important than the other. Well, I'm, I'm not I mean, the person to tell, talk shit about writing to anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Mothers <laughs> may have careers, but their first duty is to be homemakers. I disagree. I disagree. Strongly yeah. disagree. I regularly disagree. They can do whatever they want. I doesn't. If they want to be a homemaker, they can be a homemaker. Are we going by? Career, are we going by the uh, the? I don't care. Are we going by the stereotypical de- uh, definition of homemaker, the home ec yeah, mom? Yeah, they stay home, stay do all home, the projects, definitely. make the cookies, okay. and all so that. So then I dis- <laughs> then then I I will go the same route on that as the rest. What we were disagreeing with that strongly. Right? But the, <laughs> I, I, but, just, I just regularly but now, disagreed. Now, but if if I go by the I if I go by the you know like my 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 definition of a homemaker, it is always a mother and father's priority. Together. To be homemakers that create a home environment exactly. with meals and structure and standards. I don't. I don't think that's what they're this really is, talking about. Right, though. and they're, I get they're, that. They're pointing out right. women in general, but yeah. it, it is an inherent right. responsibility of parents to be homemakers sure, in yeah. the right way, not in the stereotypical way. Right. All right. Uh, multinational companies are unethically exploiting the plant genetic resources of developing countries. Some are. 
I do. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, just, I regularly agree with the that. The plant genetic research. Yeah, no, I always thought this was a weird question. Of developing countries. But I'm guessing they're talking about like, uh, you know, <clears throat> like the flowers like, from the rainforest. like pharmaceutical yeah. companies that they yeah uh, that use these. In they're their going through. Their I would. Their, I, I agree <laughs> that there are many that are unethically exploiting yeah. them. Yeah. You know, especially if, if we're not seeing results that are actually there. Uh, making peace with the establishment is an important aspect of maturity. Strongly disagree. I have to agree with this. I strongly disagree. I regularly disagree. And I say agree only from the standpoint you've got to make your peace with society to function in society. Nah, and I mean, society is governed. Maybe that's maybe your that's society. Why, maybe that's why I don't function well in society. But you do. You go get a job. Yeah, yeah. You do I mean, your I, daily I can, dailies. You get your I taxes. I can pretend, but I mean, you it's buy, not something. You buy goods and you pay taxes. Yeah. This is all part of that, John. But I haven't made peace with it. But you should. What, what no. would you rather the option be? You just, everything's given to you and I mean, you it goes lay back, around and play video games no, no, all no, no, day? No, no, no. That's not what it's that's, talking about. That's not what it's talking sure. about. No, not at all. No, it's not talking about that. It's talking about making peace with the fact that... It's necessary. That, uh, no, not that it's not... not that, Roll not it that up. It's necessary. It's right here. Okay, there it is. Yeah, making peace with the establishment as in just saying, you know what? There's nothing I can do to change it, so I'm just going to accept that. I'm, I'm going to try and change things to you know fit my my principles my morality mm -hmm. and i'm not going to stop doing that but you have to make peace with it to be able to have open dialogue and change it no, you I cannot can, can you I cannot can, fight and rebel against it and hope for that no i'm not going to hope for it i'm going but to from advocate a, for but, it but for I, I think it speaks more to accepting re the responsibility for your life having the maturity to accept the responsibility that you've got to be conducive with the establishment you've got to you've got to work with the establishment to further your own goals especially if you ever hope to change the establishment you've got to work yeah, hand in I hand still, with I it i still strongly disagree with that and i think it's a huge course. step in maturity for for young kids i don't know maybe they, when maturity. they take it <laughs> He's like, maybe I have matured. Maybe I have matured, but <laughs> exactly. I, I still, no. I, I'm, I, I mean, make, you make your peace with it every day you go to work and I follow mean, I, the system. I, might, I, don't, I, I don't mean, it is. make peace with it. I, I might take part in it, but it's not something that I enjoy doing. It's not something that I You're want part to of the do. machine, John. Yeah, I know. Apathy is the new making peace. Uh, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not apathetic at all. Astrology accurately explains many things. Strongly disagree. I regular agree. Hmm. I strongly, I mean, uh, I agree with this only from the standpoint that it's become such an integral part of how peop, our cultures look at things. Think? Astrology? Yeah, look yes. at how many people, there are lots of people who still read their right horoscope. <laughs> lots of people still read their horoscope. This is ingrained Why? in a lot of cultures in people's it's lives. It's how we started. We because, started by looking at the sky and saying, well, yeah, and, and but just, they, and kind of making, be, but know, making pictures out of it and all that. But, sure, I mean, but they're science, like, but they can use astronomical science. To no. counter show that certain fluctuations <laughs> in energy and no. water, you know, like the moon has tidal patterns. Yeah, right? the moon does. Have right, tidal and so patterns. Pa so planets affect the gravities and the movements of what happens on the Earth at certain times, but depending what on how they're lined to up. The Earth, yeah, but you not, think we're and hippies, you're don't you? born huh? in you that. You think we're a bunch of hippies? Yeah, <laughs> but see, no, yeah, yeah, like sure. I agree with I agree with from the standpoint that I think it absolutely has so much to do with how things happen in our society. I, I still strongly disagree. People, I think it's I mean, what's your sign? It's nothing, uh, Aquarius. Thank you. All right. <laughs> and you I've not been be, told uh, what it is. It's not like I know what it means. <laughs> did, you didn't even have to think about it. It's ingrained in your I was mind. About it. I but you're, you it's did. ingrained <laughs> in your mind. Right. But you still knew it offhand. Like yeah. you identify because as it's it because I did have uh, a hippie friend. Uh, he was like a new age hippie guy. He actually went to um, one of those like homeopathic uh, universities. It it's totally has no uh, accreditation or anything like that. But he learned about like homeopathy and stuff like that. Homeopathic so, doctors are wonderful. I, uh, one of, I had. I'm sorry. I, you that know, be a whole different discussion. With him as he was telling him what he was like from his si star sign. Yeah, so he was telling me. No, I wasn't. That sounds exactly like me. That sounds exactly <laughs> no, like me. Was it so off? 
It it wasn't that it was off because that's the thing is it's very good at being vague right. enough to where it can apply to anyone, no matter which exactly. one you want to say. It all applies to anyone. It can. so it's no. So I mean, what's the point if it, if it if it all yes. applies to anyone? Then what does it matter? It's, it's the simple fact that it is so inundated in our culture. <laughs> I don't think that it's that has inundated it. in sure. culture. Not anymore. Find least. a newspaper that doesn't have a horoscope. Uh, find a person who reads the newspaper online. They no, have, not online. They I'm have horoscopes on the newspaper, newspaper online. <laughs> they have At work, like, I'd sit in the break room and read the newspaper. And oh, the man. online sources have put why. the horoscopes there as well. <laughs> I don't know why. There's still All right. better places for information, and All right. you don't have to be bombarded with horoscopes. I, can, <laughs> I guarantee you, I'm going to be able to answer. I can answer this for all of us. Uh, you cannot be moral without being religious. No, strongly, no, disagree. Disagree. strongly disagree. Strongly disagree. I, you, yeah. you are correct. <clears throat> Charity is better than Social Security as a means of helping the genuinely disadvantaged. Agreed. Genuinely disadvantaged. Yeah. Now, when I, it, I'm not thinking of senior citizens who've had, you know, the opportunity right. to build life That's, savings. Yeah, this. I'm talking about that. genuinely disadvantaged. You're talking about like Medicare, Medicaid, or things right now. I do not about. believe that those people would ever see enough money from charity. Ever. To have any kind of meaningful life that they could actually get from Social Security that, in effect, at this point, is part of what Social Security is intended to do. So, so I, I think that, I disagree that it is better. I think that a charity can do a lot more for people than a government program can. But what? No, no, no. But this is. But think about it. So we're talking about Social Security to give money to these people to help them survive, versus money going to a charity that is looking into research to hopefully deal, figure out a way to fix their or some subsequent generations' well, dealings with this. Charities are also Social local Security goes to help now. So well, like, yes. you're like your local Goodwill or um, what's the other one? Uh, Salvation Army. You know, they're they're involved in the community and they know the people in their community. Whereas Social Security is this like this far off, you know, uh, government entity that no, no, no. has but no for, idea. But those that are genuinely what disadvantaged the, what the people are going through. But those that are just genuinely disadvantaged, you know, those are happening at any time in their life. It could be it could be going on most all of their life. That money's there for them to have some access to a life, right? And it was there for a reason. But to rely on it as charity, you know, we've got to depend on the goodwill of people, and that's a very optimistic standpoint to go from when we take yeah, all I mean, other money away instead. So, I, I think people are generally <clears throat> charitable. Less than a year ago, we were homeless. Okay, mm -hmm. and charities, or we went to because I genuinely could not work for medical reasons. I just med could not work, and Social Security was was the way that we were able to sustain ourselves, get back on our feet. Um, the charities we went to, yes, they gave us food, and in some cases they gave us clothes and assistance mm -hmm. as, as they could. But being in, I can tell you, there, there are not, there's not enough people giving to certain charities to help people in certain areas. Like, it's, it's, not, it's not something you can actually rely on. Yes, it's there for, if, in the quick moment you, your babies need food or in the quick moment you haven't eaten in two days that that's that's what it's there for but right but it's not going to pay your rent right that's what you're trying to yeah, say yeah it's like not it's going not to gonna, it's not know. going to find you a place to live <laughs> yeah, yeah. but I when mean, it comes down to survival yeah you know social security i think is a much better option and for they, people that are open that are deserving of getting and they also look at your, your household right. like the people in your household who's who needs help what kind of medical help you need, et cetera, et cetera, to help with the bills that you have. Yeah. It may, I mean, may, may require relocation in some cases, but it does still... I still I still agree with the, you know, I, I still agree with the question. You're hopeful. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes, he is very hopeful. It, it's, it saddens me every once in a while. Uh, some people are naturally unlucky. I agree. Yeah, I disagree. I, I, I disagree. I think you make... Naturally your, unlucky, I disagree. I think you make your own luck or bad luck. Uh, I mean, luck is luck is opportunity plus preparedness. No, no, we're hitting this one. I'm, okay, I'm, go ahead. So, I was unlucky enough to get hit by a moving vehicle while crossing a street, and What's then that? unlucky enough to lose my job due to said car accident, and then unlucky enough to become homeless due to this one event. 
the unluckiness compiled in naturally. I had nothing to do with these things. <laughs> I was on the crosswalk with the light walk, all my following all the rules. That is unlucky. <laughs> I mean, it is unlucky. But naturally yeah. unlucky, actually, because <laughs> everything that happened after this. Well, was... yeah, you're saying, but that to That's me that unlucky. says you were born with that level of luck i fall on my but face continuously i've broken many bones these are all unlucky like you, the branch broke underneath me have you ever had any, but have you ever had any good luck i married henry <laughs> Does oh it yeah balance? i don't think anyone at home knows that uh yeah that uh henry is married to happy here <laughs> they're out folks they're out, they're out. out and proud. that's right folks the secret is in <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, it is important that my child's school instills religious values. Strongly, strongly disagree. disagree. I strongly, strongly, I strongly disagree. disagree Henry, well. answer that three times for me, please. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> you know, Henry, if I didn't know any better. <laughs> All right, let's talk about sex, baby. All right, sex outside marriage is usually immoral. I disagree. Uh, I disagree. Yeah, I disagree. I'm all for try it before you buy it. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Sex <laughs> outside marriage is usually immoral. Okay. So this is just talking about the, the sanctity of marriage, not your marriage. So we're not talking about cheating. We're just talking about You're not un married. unwed sex. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. You got to be careful. You never know. This could be that trick question. Um, no, I strongly disagree that it's immoral. It's usually immoral. It's just sex. Yeah. A same-sex couple in a stable, loving relationship should not be excluded from the possibility of child adoption. I agree with that. I strongly agree I with strongly that. strongly agree. Children need happy, healthy homes. I don't care. Absolutely. I've mm -hmm. been that way all my life, ever since I came out. Pornography depicting consenting adults should be legal for the adult population. I yes. agree. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I uh, agree with that. I do agree with that. Uh, what goes on in a private bedroom between consenting adults is no business of the state. Strongly. I strongly, <laughs> strongly agree, agree with that. Uh, no one can feel naturally homosexual. What? I, <laughs> I strongly disagree I, yeah, because I, apparently people are feeling naturally homosexual all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm a Robert. <laughs> <laughs> it's all natural homosexuality. No con preservatives. <laughs> Homegrown. <laughs> no GMOs. No gluten. Just all homo. It's all, all natural. 100% homo. These days, openness about sex has gone too far. I disagree. I dis I, I have to agree. I to disagree. Certain, I'm going to have to throw some agreement on there because, look. Oh, here we go. We're going to see our results. If I'm, gonna, I'm excited. I'm, I'm going to say that it has well gone too far from the simple standpoint that we are not as afraid to expose our children to it as we have been in, in the old days. And now we need to consider the source of where children are getting their education about sex. It, there has I mean, to be some boundaries. Do. Well, I mean, there's nothing you can do about where children hear about sex. There absolutely it. is. It's called better parenting. Yeah, exactly. well, but I mean, they're going to hear about it from their friends no matter what, unless you keep them away from having That's friends. Not, not if we had a culture of better me, parenting. My parents talked to me long before the school day. Oh, yeah. See, I before found my friends, from friends and stuff. See, and yeah, and see, we also exactly had regulated internet. The, 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 the right, internet and the TV both in the living room. Like, so was, you're a social liberal, uh, economic left, right? So you swing a little bit to the right. Slightly to the right of libertarian. Yeah. Of libertarian and so below Screenshot. authoritarian. So you're we much more. That yeah, so yeah, people we're, can we're, see it. Yeah, we're going to include this uh, actually right here at this point in, in the, the video. In the video, we're going to include all uh, both of our. All three of them. All three of them. You want to do all three? Yeah. My, I did a test too. Henry oh, answered yeah. my question. Okay. Oh, Henry, don't use my real name. Use Robert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his real name is way more embarrassing. All right, Robert. Yeah, let's see what we got here. Um, yeah, see, I told you that's where you would be. I knew you'd be there. <laughs> I've got you pegged. I've, I've, All right, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I've wow. got you pegged. So, you are left of libertarian, uh, left leaning libertarian, but you are actually it's higher because I up. have a little bit more socialist leanings. Yeah, than you. but you're you're more higher Barely. towards authoritarian than me. 
Um, yes, only from the standpoint that, you know, as, yeah. as you know how I think, I mean, we need more structure. Children don't grow well without structure, and right. this country is full of children. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, the, the difference is, you know, whether the state is giving that, them that structure or you as a parent. Given well, no, no, no. That's I'm not just talking about children. I'm talking about the adult children running around this country thinking they make the rules. Oh, is this the other one for... Oh, previous Robert. Oh, you did me... Bo- Wait, that was me young? No. This one is you young. And it's exactly the it's same. It's exactly, almost exactly the same. You've moved like a half a centimeter. Just slightly movement. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys are... So I swung a little bit more right... Slightly. And a little more authoritarian, which is and not surprising is, yeah. to me. So this is me young on the left, right? Yes. And then, yeah, so... So you're... You're, you're saying I've become more liberal? No. The first, the one on top here, this one is me young. So you So it's saying I was more conservative when I was young? No, I think it was the other way around. Okay, so then it's right. So I have swung to the right and more authoritarian as I've gotten older. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah. I'm hanging um, out on the left side, guys. All right, so... You haven't really changed from the last time you did this, John, right? From the and you, most recent and, time. But and I you're a right leaning libertarian. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I was actually in the, about the same spot uh, that you're in now, but maybe a little lower. So, like, less towards authoritarian. Right. Uh, and I've actually moved more towards authoritarian, but then on the right of libertarian. So I've right. kind of gone up right. and to the right. Slightly, but, but slightly up, not even that much. Right. And um, as we can see, you know, much to what I thought, I mean, I think it, maybe that's a pretty significant swing for me from the liberal I was earlier yeah. in life to a little more conservative, but still had a lot of liberal mean, leanings. And I think that has to do with my sexual proclivity, my mm-hmm. multiracial heritage. Mm-hmm. Um, those kind of things mm-hmm. are going to keep me leaning in that liberal field. Yeah. So let's take a look and see what Joy had to to, to bring to the table real quick. I'm kind of curious here. Yeah. Um, see if we've got anything surprising. Looks wow. like she's even more libertarian than, <coughs> than you are. Wow. So, you know, you're, you, you're, you're definitely, uh, yeah, that's, uh, I could see that you seem pretty liberal, but you yeah. know, there's, uh, definitely uh, not the, the type of, you know, feminist that we're used to talking about. <laughs> it is definitely it'll be, not. It would be up here in the top left. Yeah. So we're not right, right, yeah, right area. Yeah, yeah. I, I will very say authoritarian, very left. No, I will say one area. thing, Henry, if you could, uh, pull my younger version up real quick. Um, whether we want to edit this out and put it side by side with Joy, because I think uh, I think that she and I, uh, very uh, for, for the young, uh, from the younger standpoint, she and I are very close to where uh, one well, another even, in that even mindset. Even for now, you guys <coughs> agreed more often with each other than with me. Mm-hmm. I did notice that, which yeah. I was surprised by. Cause yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So maybe the gap isn't as far as y'all thought, huh? But again, yeah. but I again, mean, you we have... We have we have things that are so. This is me now. Yeah, see, she's this still. Is, well, more, no, this is because I, I. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. no, she's no, no. This is this is more closer younger. Down. Yeah, yeah. Um, so when it's all said and done, I think again that you know the idealism of the multi race, mm-hmm. you know the the gender. Yes. You know you have you know you have those avenues that again lead you down that path to being more idealistic. Yeah. More, uh, you know. Fuck the man at your age, <laughs> like I was, you know. But I think that you know, children are going to—they'll—they'll they'll start to drive you towards that conservative, swinging a little more to the yeah. right, yeah, a little more, because you begin to be a little more conservative. I mean, I, yeah. I think this is what happens to everybody when, yeah. if you have children. If you don't have children, that 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 may not may swing at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Children are going to make a big difference. Buying a house makes a difference when yes. you start to look at taxes and how the it, those are impa- impa- how impa- it's yeah. taxation right. is theft, by the way. All right, <laughs> and we'll close the show with that. Fair tax, fair tax. That's right. Fair All right. Tax. So, uh, so if you like what you heard tonight, please uh, make sure and go ahead and subscribe. Hit that like button. Uh, tell your friends. Tell your family. Blast it on Twitter. Throw it on Instagram. Send it in an email to your grandma and mail it to your congressman. Make sure everybody hears about it. Let's That's get right. part of the discussion going with all of you out there, just as well as we're having the conversation here. We're going to keep talking. We'll see you next time. Yep, see you. Bye, guys.